Well, here we are, Clive. Um, the Friday night, 25th of May, 1999. The uh, 50th uh, Golden Anniversary uh, celebrations of aerotop dressing in New Zealand. 1949 it started, and here we are 50 years later, 1999, and we're still going. This is the registration um, on the Friday night where people sort of come along and get together and have a bit of a yak and uh, talk to the old mates. So, uh, do you see a few friends there uh, from the old days, Clive? What, what do you think? Well, Murray, it, uh, it's a long, long time ago, too, and there's one or two uh, old identities there, but uh, at the moment I can't quite see them, but uh, they will uh, turn up uh, <laughs> as we see them. Um, there's a few uh, uh, young people there as well who are sort of coming to the uh, foray. Here's a few uh, people here from way back. Uh, you recognise any of these people here, Clive? Well, Noel Kimberger with the balding head is going to picture across myself from way back there. Mm. Uh, and, um, and, of course, the old stalwarts behind the, uh, the organiser of the show, uh, Pat and uh, Lil uh, Cook. And there's uh, Barry Cook on the right and uh, the, ho the old... Uh, the old fellow there, Noel Mangan, who's the man who really got this place off the ground uh, many, many years ago, 15 years ago. Because he actually done it the uh, last time too, at the 45th, uh, he organised a reunion and he said he wasn't going to do it again, but something must have twisted his arm and he decided, well, let's have another go, and he's back into it again. Well, that's, that, that's uh, Noel. Uh, no, no more next time, and then he comes along and does it again, and that's, that's a true dedicated aviator and, and a true believer in what it's all about. So what was uh, planned for the weekend? Um, we had the, the Friday night registrations here that we're seeing at the moment. Yes. And then on uh, the Saturday we had the air show uh, put on by the boys and uh, out of building airstrip there. And the Saturday night we had the, um, the, the dinner and the dine and dance and a few speeches. Uh, uh, it all went well, didn't it, Clive? Oh, an excellent show. Uh, many a memory will be uh, taken home with these people. And uh, after all these years, there's a lot of faces people meeting one at each other again after many many moons it's yeah. perfect yeah we can see a few people here sort of yeah. sitting around and yarning and uh, just talking about uh, where they've been and what they've done and uh, who's that fellow there in the black suit there that's uh that Ozzie. looks uh, that is uh, uh aussie james yeah. yes one of the very early pioneers of top routine right from the start yes and a few uh, females there too, a few wives and girlfriends, yeah, yes. and uh, the backbone of the uh, the boys. Yes, um, giving them a bit of a support there. Yep, as long as those women, uh, a lot of these fellas would have never stayed at it. Uh, great, great supporters. Yeah. Yeah, there must have been a good number because there was about uh, oh, nearly 250, 300 people there on the Friday night. Oh, at least, yes. And uh, I think the n numbers nearly doubled on the, on the Saturday night for the dine and dance, which was, which was very good, uh, very good turnout. Oh, it was, yes, excellent. Everyone uh, enjoyed it thoroughly, Maria. We had uh, people from not only from New Zealand but from Australia, uh, New Guinea and parts of Europe too had come over for the reunion and uh, uh, to partake in the, um, in, the, in the old super that was dropped. That's right, yes. One of them I see in the, early in the picture was uh, Noel Kinvig. Um, he came from in, in that area, Europe. And uh, these fellows here, of course, are getting older. It's hard to recognise them, but uh, way back. Yep. And there's uh, Don Selby, one of the, uh, the uh, historians of the, of the aviation industry. As fellas I don't recognise, but uh, yeah, I think they they, they uh, pop up again later on in the video when we're actually they, talking I, to them. Yeah, yeah. so um, mm -hmm. um, one of our local boys, Bob Thurston, just gone through there. Shot past, going heading for the bar. Yeah, yeah George Hedishide, one of the oldest pilots in the country now, is 71 years of age. He flies the Fletcher later on in the show. John Brandon from uh, Rotorua on the right there, and he's a loaded driver for many years in the top racing industry. Oh, a budding uh, pilot there, Clive, perhaps, um, yeah. maybe. <laughs> yes, he could be one of the future, yes, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah good night was spent uh, looking at all the old photos too, I think. There was a lot of, uh, there was heaps of photos of uh, aeroplanes and and uh, all that paraphernalia that sort of went on in the top dressing uh, industry. Oh, it was, yes, it was, Murray. It was a great display. Reed Cady also from Australia with the glasses and the... Uh, there on the on the left, and of course uh, Bob Cranston on the right. There used yeah. to be based in the Wairapa. 
Well, he's still going and uh, had to be flying. So where's where's uh, where's Bob based now? The city was in the wire wrapper. Is he out of the yeah, wire? No, he's still the Bob is still flying in the wire wrapper. Oh, okay, yes. Okay, right. Yep. So you can see there's uh, quite a few happy faces around. Oh um, yes. Yep. So there's my brother Jim on the right there. Oh, yep. And Russell, oh gosh, oh, of course myself. Oh, no, that is. Uh, oh, he <laughs> looks like a, like a pilot. Yeah, it used to be. <laughs> yeah, I recognise Peter McCall with the glasses there, and, uh, yes. and uh, his mate there, probably uh, another pilot from, from way back, probably, probably flew together, and... Uh, Done all sorts of stuff together. One or two, yes, in the, in the area. There's Ozzy James again, of course. And the man in the centre, I'm not quite certain of. That's like. Peter McColl. Oh, that's yeah, right. Peter yes, Peter McColl, yeah. McCall, Peter yeah. McCall, yeah. Yep. Yep. Here we go, looking at some more photos. Yes, that's a great uh, hint of stare. They're looking back through the oh old yeah. times. That's straight dead right, yep. Yep. And uh, this tape contains a lot of interviews with um, pilots, uh, new and old and far between. Yes. And, uh, so we'll be coming up to one of those shortly, and uh, we'll yep. be able to um, hear some of their stories and, uh, and reminiscences of um, from way back. So it should be good. Here we see a group looking at some old uh, commercial pilots' flying school photos. Yeah. He's probably picking himself out the I say, yeah. and uh, it could have been from one of the it could have been from one of the early flying school. Love them went through yeah. that in the in the uh, in the uh, well, there's, cer there's certainly an old 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 picture that might take you back. Um, yeah. Look at that sucker there. It's, it's, she's a beauty, in it? <laughs> that's that. way back. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. I can't quite pick the uh, yeah, it's area out. Right. Oh, it looks like now there's yeah. the Wanganui Aero Echo. I used yeah. to fly for that company, yes. Right, yeah, there's a lot of photos here. Great stuff, sort of um, um, people that have been flying for over the 50 years and yeah. um, in, in the industry. Yeah. And some great, great pictures. Great pictures. Yep. Uh, so it looks like an egg wagon coming in to land there. Yep, yep. Well, he's well, spraying. Well, I hope he's not landing, yeah, otherwise he'd be landing, he's, he's spraying yeah, or something, yeah. that's right, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. Oh, mighty. Yeah. Well, we'll cut back now, and uh, we've got, yeah. so we've got some interviews coming up shortly, yeah. um, and uh, we'll um, we'll come back uh, at the end of the uh, gap there and um, see what we can do, and uh, meanwhile, we'll just sit back and listen to the interviews. Righto then, Mario. Okay. Right. Excuse me, young fellas. Who have we got here? We've got a couple of local lads. Dave Starr. Dave Starr. Uh, David. Likely lads. I don't know what we're likely about. And when did you start? Uh, what's your connection to aviation here? Uh, you name it. What have you done? What have I done? Yeah. Probably absolutely nothing. <laughs> absolutely nothing. You're a pilot? Yeah, a pilot. Yeah, no, yeah. I started, started motor, motor driving in the early 60s. Early 60s? Who yeah. for? For James Aviation. Whereabouts was that, was that started? Uh, well, I was on the DC-3, so that was around from any, anything from uh, Kaitaia to uh, Taupo. Kaitaia to Taupo? Well, more or less, yeah, yeah, near enough. Yeah. And, uh, and then the late 60s, went flying and went to Walkworth, and I'm still there. Still loaded driving? No, no, flying. I started flying in Oh, you're 69. flying now? Yeah. 69, you're starting. What are you flying now, then? Flying Fletcher. Yeah. Still flying Fletcher? Fletcher, yep. Same yep. company? No, no, flying for myself, but, which I've been for the last 15, 16 years. Oh, good stuff. Yep. Yeah, and whereabouts are that again? In North Island? Yeah, in Walkworth. Walk, Walkworth? Just okay. north, north, of, north of Walkland. Okay, who's this young fellow over here yeah, you've been talking is, to? This is Alan Rose. Alan? Yeah. How are you, Alan? Yeah. And what's your connection in the uh, aviation industry? A uh, uh, load of driver. And how long have you been loading driving for? 1952. 52. You started in 52? 52. 52, yeah. And who was that for? Airspec. Airspec. And whereabouts did you start? In the Tauranga. Whereabouts? Tauranga. Tauranga. And whereabouts have you been anywhere? Anywhere else? Oh, I've, I've been about uh, uh, two and a half years. Of the same firm, Airspeed. And you're still flying, still uh, loaded driving? Yeah. Yeah, you're still loaded driving? Yeah. Oh, you've got a bit of a, bit of a bull here. <laughs> no, no, there is no, there's no bull. There's no bull, still loaded driving? Yeah. Same company? No, no. no. Uh, here are uh, four firms through the years. <laughs> oh, that's not bad. Four jobs for the four. Yeah. Oh, that's good. And you don't enjoy the weekends? Oh, yeah. 
see a few of the old fellas and tell a few lies. All lies. But all the lies, the lies, big beer, a lies coming up now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, after a few of those, they'd be uh, even, even better still. All right, we'll have to enjoy the evening and the weekend, and we'll catch later on. I'll do the best anyway. The supper thing, anyway. Good stuff. All right, catch later, guys. See ya. Okay. <laughs> We've got uh, John, John Brandon, is that right? Right, yes. And what's your connection in aviation? Uh, later driving and operation manager, branch manager, two things. And when did you start? 54. 1954, whereabouts? Uh, Martin, air contracts in Martin. Air contracts? Yep. And, and where'd you go from there? Still? Uh, well, the uh, manual top dressing company, I went over there as well, we'll driving for Naylor Smith. Right. And I went back to air contracts, and then uh, 1970, I was operation manager in uh, Warapa for Basel. Uh, oh, that's, good. Mm. that's good stuff. I see your cohort has disappeared. That's too scared of the old interview. <laughs> All right, so what are you up to now? Enjoying the weekend so far? Um, and yes, I am, very much. Yeah, Thank you. yeah, yeah. You're seeing a lot of old faces. Yeah, telling a few lies and that sort of stuff. And, uh, no, no. Submitting a bit of super. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's good. Oh, well, I hope you enjoy the evening oh, and the weekend. Thank you, and, yes. um, we're going to be able to kick out the old uh, boys flying tomorrow with a bit of Absolutely, luck. yes we will. Okay, yeah, good one, John. Thanks very much. Thanks. Who we got here? This is the, uh, probably the first, uh, he was the earliest guy to start top dressing in Hawke's Bay. Okay. That's Derek Turnbull. Derek Turnbull. Yes. Okay, Derek, and when did you, when did you start uh, top dressing? Well, this was in um, the 1950. You started in 1950. 1950 with um, Tiger Moth. Tiger Moth. It might have even been early, late 1949. Okay, and who was that for? What company? That was myself. That was myself? That's right. Okay, and yeah. whereabouts? It was a little in uh, Hastings, Hawke's Bay. Hawke's Bay, and okay, yeah. yeah. And we, we called the firm, we called it Hawke's Bay uh, Wings Fertilizers. Wings Fertilizers. Oh, that makes, that makes sense, yeah. That's good, yeah. And how long were you doing that for? Uh, well, we had it from 1949 right through to uh, 1963. 1963. Uh, and then re retired from them and um, uh, bought a farm. Okay, that's good. And um, after Tiger Moss, did you stay in the other aircraft at all? Oh, yes, we had t Tiger Moss, um, uh, Seth airplanes, two Seth airplanes, a Fletcher FP-24, and then um, four Pipers, Warnies. So you more or less done the whole gamut, really, haven't you? 18 days. Uh, yeah, that's right. And then I, um, I sold the whole works to Field Air in 1962, oh, okay. 61. And all, all good straight flying? No um, no hidden side of the hills or that sort of stuff? Or? <laughs> Maybe we got away scot-free. You got scot-free, yeah? Scot -free, free, yeah. Not, not too much. We've never had a fatality. No, yeah, that's no. good, eh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. yeah. Oh, we're still, still here to enjoy the weekend and... Uh, and tomorrow's air show with a little bit of luck and, oh, um, yeah, you know. It should be good too. Yeah, it should, should be good, good too. I'll be looking forward to it. All right, Derek, oh, all right. See if they can do it the same as we used to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. They're a bit more cautious now. Too many bureaucrats. All right, Derek, well, I hope you enjoy the weekend oh. and uh, we'll catch up to you again. Good, thank you. All right, you. Good luck. Thank you. All right, now, who we got here? Sorry to interrupt you guys. Uh, we got Peter. We got, uh, who we got here? We got Ken and we got Mike. Yep. And what's, start with Mike, what's your connection in aviation? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> none of my if, if any. The super, the super phosphate, so thick that I'm uh, having a wriggle out of it. So you know, we're, we're in the business. You're in the business? Yep. What, as what, pilot or, or? Was previously and uh, now do a bit of managing. Okay, yeah. when did you start flying? Oh, 1969. Yeah. Where, whereabouts? Um, in Raglan. In Raglan? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And what's your aircraft that you're flying then? A 300 horsepower Fletcher. Fletcher, yeah. Okay, so they were Fletcher all the time, or did you go into other other aircraft? Oh, I moved on to 400 horsepower Fletcher. 400, yeah. <laughs> really and truly a Oh, yeah, especially yeah. after, yeah. Then, yeah. then got to do a little bit more. Then it was into a turbine, yeah. Yeah, that's good, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. you still flying? You're still in the business? No, 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 no. You're no. not? Gave that up. Party no, dangerous, no. mate. <laughs> Party dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Who we got here? We got Peter. Yeah. And what's your connection, Peter, in the old aviation? We, we build agricultural aeroplanes. You build the planes. Okay, and these guys try and wreck them for you. Successfully, too. Successfully, yes. yes. <laughs> and who do you work for? Or you're still working for them? I own the company, the Gippsland Aeronautics in Australia. In Australia, it's... Australia? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Oh, good. So you come over here to um, 
hear what's going on. Look at the wreckage, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Look at the wreckage. Take some back or bring some new bits oh, over with you? Uh, we'll send him some bits, yeah. Uh, that's good stuff, yeah. Now, what have you got here, uh, Ken? Yeah, yeah, no, no. What, What's your connection with the aviation? Well, I'm a top racing pilot, yeah. Yeah, and about, when did you start? When did you start? Uh, 1973. 1973, whereabouts? Yeah. Hastings. Hastings. Yeah. You're still going? Still there, still, still there. going. And who, who's the company? Me. <laughs> <laughs> You want in Fletchers? Yeah, a couple of Fletchers. Okay, that's good, yeah, yeah. And going to be enjoying the weekend this weekend? Oh, great. Yeah, Should good, be right, good eh? to have a weekend off. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Oh, I hope you guys enjoy the weekend and uh, we can see you around again. Yep, all right. See Thank you. Just going to do a bit of an interview here for the old aviation. Who we got here? We got um, Frank, Frank, Rex and Ben. Is that right? Ben. Yeah. We'll start with you, Frank. What's your connection to aviation? Well, I was instructing at Wanganui in 1947 when Rex and I sat together in the school and we taught him when uh, later, after I went through. Uh, so he's ruined the industry. He has ruined the industry ever since. <laughs> <laughs> and do um, you have to do any flying yourself? Do you have to top dressing no, or just here, instructing? Not, not, not here, but not here? No, no, all around the rest of the world. Yeah. The rest of the world? And for example, what? Oh, it's Ni Nigeria and Cameroon. I was in Panama for four years, okay. and then I was in the Sudan, and then I was in Jamaica. Yeah. I heard a lot of guys going over to the um, desert-type states. So what do you spray in those sort of countries, like the Sudan and that sort of stuff? Bananas. I was on most bananas. of the time, yeah. Okay, what, for disease, bananas? They yeah. have to be sprayed every two weeks. Every two weeks? Wonderful. Oh, okay, Wonderful yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. So what happened now? Are you still in the industry, or are you... No, uh, I finished now. Finished, yeah, okay. It's a nice compliment you've paid, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm 73. 73, oh, that's good stuff. Okay, we go with the Rex here. Frank, Frank Breeds, Qantas pilot. His, pilot. his son is a Qantas pilot, yeah. Oh, that's good stuff. Yeah, all, all yeah. All the families have got the uh, wings under their uh, Well, it's pretty, the outside, it's pretty satisfying for instructors if they can turn their children to it. That's good. Why well, you, Rex? Are you in the aviation yourself? Absolutely, yeah. A whole life of it. Starting off with engineering. Yes. In the very early days of aircraft service in Auckland. Right. The first aeroplane that they converted was ANN. Oh, yeah. And I was working on that aeroplane. What sort of aircraft was that? That's a Tiger Moth. Tiger Moth. One of the first Tiger Moths, yes. Right, yeah. Okay. And um, did you go into flying yourself or the oh, straight, yeah. the straight yeah, didn't, start, didn't stop at that. When Frank and I were together, we were on the school in Wanganui. Right. Uh, we were learning the game and then we, we finished up teaching it. Oh, and, it's great stuff, huh? And subsequently, I went to Safia and had a major career in Blenheim. Oh, that's good stuff. Right, yeah. still there. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's good. We're going to uh, Ben here. He's uh, trying to keep his bear warm under his armpit there. He's a wild Australian boy. What's your connection to aviation, Ben? Oh, I've been an Aggie pilot, you know, all this time. Okay. Yeah. And when did you start? I finished uh, last uh, top dressing run just last Friday. You finished? Not finished, no, I hope not, but hope not, just yeah. before I came here, I got a yeah. job finished. And when, when did you start flying? Uh, in 1958. These were my instructors, these fellas. Oh, at Wanganui, yeah. Oh, you're still here, so they must be pretty good instructors then, eh? Well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the aircraft that you're flying? Oh, most of the Aggie stuff, you know, yeah, like okay. the top dressing planes and yeah. a bit of GA stuff. In New Zealand only, or...? or uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, I did a little bit here earlier on, right. like with these fellas, and yeah. I worked in Taranaki for a while. Right. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and right. then I went to, back to Aussie, and I worked in the Sudan and the UK. Okay, yeah, yeah. What's it like working in these uh, sort of hot countries? Good? Oh, depends what's hot over there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about the weather. Not all that hot. In, in, the, in the southeastern part of Australia, where I've worked mostly, yeah. it's quite cool there, you yeah, know, yeah. on those tablelands. Yeah. What is spraying in Australia? Like this, uh, uh, it's top dressing, bananas, mostly that. Bananas again? Or, or oh, no, 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 no. The bananas are way up north, north in okay, Australia, yeah, yeah. 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 No, I'm in the southern part. Right. You know, in eastern Victoria, yeah, in yeah. the eastern highlands. Oh, it's good. Oh, Ben, I hope you enjoy the weekend, and, uh, you know, you know with your mates here, yeah. and uh, we'll see you again. Thank you. Okay, all right. Good one. Good on you. Thanks. Well, like Lairs, we've got Jim. And John, Jim and John. Now, what did you do, Jim? What were you doing, flying? Yes, I was flying for... I started off uh, in the hangar, did a bit of load of driving, and then went flying, and then, then operations manager after that. Well, that's good. And this guy over here, what, 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 what was he doing for you? John was loaded driving for me. Okay. And, uh, John, when did you start uh, loaded driving? In, uh, in Master 1954. 1954? Yeah. Tiger yeah. Moths. Yeah. And you're loading, loading for Jim, were you? I well, loaded for Jim in 1960, uh, about 1961. 
1961. Now you're starting a little story before about uh, the beach. What, what's the background on that beach bit that uh, you're talking about? Well, we were we were working on a strip out by the coast, just west of Masterton. And uh, it was a hot sunny day and we ran out of super and we were waiting for some trucks to arrive. And I spotted this little beach down below there, it looked very inviting. So I said to John, uh, let's go down for a swim. He said, oh, no thanks, no, I'll just wait here, I think. I said, well, I'm going, I'm as hot as hell. So I went down and there was a bit of a sea breeze coming in. I landed into wind on the strip, on the beach at least. And uh, I went to turn away from the water uh, and turn downwind to park it, and I ran into some soft sand. And just at that <laughs> moment, the wind gusted up very strong. And as the aircraft struck the soft sand, of course, the tail came up, and this wind got under the tail, and I had it teetering on the top with full throttle and full throttle and a stick ride back, trying to. Uh, pull the tail down but no no luck finally I gave up and I just cut the throttle and she went over into nose into the sand and John spotted me from up on the strip he saw what had happened so he brought the loader down to pull me out and you wouldn't believe it he got the loader stuck in the sand too a bit, embar a bit embarrassing eh? <laughs> meantime the tides coming in and luck luckily for us there were some fishermen had seen what had happened, they were just along the beach and they had a four-wheel drive, a big Land Rover. They came along and pulled us both out. They had a bent prop on the uh, on the aircraft, but it was not too bad. And it was, was that a Tiger? Back. No, no, it was Cessna 180. Cessna. Yeah. And uh, you couldn't fly home then, could you? Oh, yeah, I could. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't bent badly, but it was bent enough to annoy the boss, uh, Colin James. <laughs> <laughs> and they wanted to have to be flown back up and a new prop put on but uh, and did you get did you get a swim in in the end no that's the thing i never <laughs> did get that swim <laughs> I'd, I'd actually gone to have a bit of a sleep okay and i was sort of lying there with my eyes shut and i i heard i actually saw him land on the beach i lay back and i heard the thing rev up to you know, as he went to swing it round and it sort of hello hello i looked over the beach and he was on his nose <laughs> Oh, it's good stuff, and uh, oh, well, it's one of those little stories that you remember from way back, eh? So it's, uh, yeah, it's one of the good stories to hear off too, eh, you know? Yeah. To come out the right, that's the main thing. Yeah, they only come out just the main, yeah, excellent. All right, guys, I will hope you enjoy the rest of the evening and um, tomorrow on the weekend, and we'll catch up with you again. Thank you. Okay, John, okay, okay, Jim, yes, later. Right. Next, Tom, and we got Ken. Yeah. We'll do a few, work, a few words off you on the old flying type career, isn't it? So when you start, Lex? Where did I start? Oh, um, in uh, Gore. <laughs> in Gore, 1977. In Gore? Yes. Okay, what would you start flying with? What is, what's your aircraft? Uh, a UH-12E, Hiller. 12A. Oh, the old Hiller. So yes. you're, you're, a, you're a rotor wing pilot? Yes, I am. Oh, okay, am. yeah, still are. Yeah. Yes. And what are you flying now? Uh, 500. 500, yeah. Okay, it's good. And still in Gore, or? Uh, I live in Gore, but I work offshore a lot of the time. Okay, and who, where are you working from then? I work for a Canadian company. Okay, so in Canada obviously. A lot of the time. Okay, what sort of work Mexico. do you do over there? Sort of, uh, mining, sorts? mining, ag work. Uh, okay, yep. Forest fire. Yep. Yeah, fire you forest, mentioned Mexico fire. as well. Same there, same sort of work that, there that as was well? seismic work. Oh, okay, seismic work. Okay, so dropping bombs and seeing where um, where the old seismic waves come from. That's right. You oh, that's good it. stuff. Yeah, yeah, and you start flying in New Zealand? Yes, it did. In Gore? Yes, it did. Okay. And uh, trying to ride a wing, or were you doing fixed wing I first? Couldn't, I couldn't find a job fixed wing. Right. I had a, had a fresh commercial. Right. So I got my uh, rotary wing license. Oh, that's good. I, yeah. I got a flying job uh, rotary wing first. Oh, excellent. So I continued on. Oh, excellent. And where's that male man gone? Oh, we'll go over to Ken here. Go and see Ken. Where do you best you start flying, Ken? And Gore. And Gore, Gore as well. 1970, oh, 1974, yeah. Fixed yeah. wing again, or rotary yeah. wing? Fixed wing, Tiana. Fixed wing, yeah. okay, yeah. And, well, I actually uh, started in Tiana. Tiana? Yeah. Oh, okay, what's the aircraft to start flying in? A 188. 188 Cessna. Yeah. Oh, egg wagon. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And uh, all over the country, or? No, no, I just, just can't get away from the place. Can't get away from the place. I'm still in Gore, yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah good place, eh? Yeah. yeah. Okay. And who are you working for down there? Myself, McKenzie Aviation. McKenzie Aviation. Yeah. Okay, got a lot of work on? Plenty on? Oh, no, uh, we're always... Down
down through to the normal. That's right. Yeah, yeah. you got it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, it's good. Well, I hope you're enjoying the weekend here so oh, far. Yeah. And, um, I won't be for the next 50. Will you be here for the next 50? Oh, I don't think so. No, <laughs> no, no. But this stuff could be in the old archives anyway. Yeah. Well, I hope you're enjoying the rest of the weekend yeah. and uh, we'll chat to you again. Yeah, right. Okay, sure. mate. Good, good one. On okay. Who are we swapping, uh, swapping telephone numbers here, are we? Where's he gone? You get back here. He's paid off. Who we got here? We got uh, Joan. We got Joan, Peter, and uh, Monica. We'll start with you, Joan. What's your connection in aviation? Well, it's through my friend Frank Sinnott. Through my friend Frank Sinnott, who was in Wanganui many years ago. Right. Uh, involved with the uh, aerial top dressing. Right, okay, yes. yeah. Yep, and we're yep. both Australians. Oh, okay. So you come over from Australia, have you? Or? No, no, I've been here since 1957. 1956, so you're a true blue Kiwi then, yes, I guess. Yes, That's right, good. thank you. Would you make care? Right, passing on to my friend. We'll go on to Peter. Peter here, Peter and Monica. When did you start flying, Peter? What's your connection in aviation? I learned to fly in the mid 50, early 50, mid 50s, and right. uh, my top dress from. Uh, about 57 through to 1960. 1960, yeah. And then went to NAC, National Airways. Okay. Then, to, then to Air New Zealand. Air New Zealand? Yeah. Okay, what are you doing now? Flying 747s? No, I'm retired <laughs> and loving it. Yeah. It's a good feeling, eh? Yeah. <laughs> well, flying big jets beat the hell out of working for a living. Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, what you start flying in? Tiger Moths. Tiger Moths, yeah. okay. Learned to fly in Tiger Moths. Okay, and uh, before that, though, did you always have an interest in flying? As oh, yes. From, as a youngster, uh, whatever? Yes, my father was a, an electrical engineer right. and did all the electrical wiring for all the fighter airfields around Auckland, Ardmore, Seagrove, Mangry during right. the war. Right. And I got the bug. You got the bug, eh? And you, yeah. you couldn't lose it. No. <laughs> oh, that's excellent. Yeah. And uh, what's your lovely wife, Monica, is it? Yes. Okay, yes. what's it like being uh, the um, the wife of a pilot? Very such? enjoyable. Very enjoyable. <laughs> I now fly behind him in a little chipmunk. Oh, oh that's that yeah. right. Yeah. So okay. I follow him. <laughs> oh, okay. So you I got a license behind. as well? No, 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 I just hang on behind. Just hang on tight. Yes. <laughs> I really enjoyed the scenery and everything. Oh, it's excellent. Well, I've been enjoying the weekend so oh, yeah. far, and I'll get your show tomorrow, and uh, we'll see you again. Yes. yes. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck. We've <laughs> <laughs> got a couple of like lads here. Who we got here? we got one here called Bill. And Neil. And Neil. And Ross. And Ross. And Diane. And Diane. Okay. We'll start with you, uh, Bill. What's your connection to the old aviation? I did my engineering apprenticeship with Airland which is now Field Air. Field Air, okay. So just engineering or just... Engineering and loader driving. And loader driving. Yeah. Okay. And how many tons of uh, super director you would have loaded over the years? <laughs> how? <laughs> a few. Oh, was, yeah. Well, oh, well, we'll never have a clue now. Oh, okay. Going yeah. back a few years ago. Have now. you still doing it now? Or you're... No, I'm flying for um, Eagle Air now. Eagle Air, okay. Yeah, got, yeah. Out of, got out of the egg in industry. Okay, yeah, good. And when did you start actually doing flying? Um... Hey, Neil, we went together, didn't we? Can't be that long ago, can it? 75? Yeah, some, uh, about, about, yeah about 75. Yeah, about, it would have been about 75. 75, yeah. what'd you start flying in? Uh, a little Boko 208 at the Palmerston Flying School. Oh, OK, yeah, with, um, right, okay. Brian, Brian yeah. Milne. Oh, OK, right, OK. Yeah. And how long are you doing that for? Um, well, I went, actually ended up going up to New Guinea from uh, from here and okay. flying up there. So oh, right, okay. quite a few years up there and yeah. came back to field here again. Yeah, right, OK. And... Yeah. Um, Load of driving engineering, a yes. bit of time with Peter Lacey, okay, Nelson, yeah. Yeah, 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 and yeah. Uh, then went back overseas again for seven odd years in New Guinea, back to Australia and back to here. What's the, uh, what's the attraction for New Guinea? Money? No, the, the flying. The, the what? Yeah, the flying. The, flying. the challenge. The challenge. Yeah. Why, why? What's the challenge in New Guinea? Just really good flying. Okay. You know, yeah. 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 It was, it's like top dressing except it's in the passenger freight industry. Okay, right. Yeah. yeah every day was a challenge. Uh, the flying was excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I really miss the place. Oh, it's good stuff. Yeah, yeah I suppose it's, yeah, like I say, the challenge, all the mountains and that is what we're talking about. The yes. terrain, yeah. the type of country you're yeah. flying in. You can throw the map out. Yeah. It's like... Um, well, I consider it to be ag industry in the respect that, yeah, you, know, you just got to know the terrain, know right. the area, yeah. and local knowledge, that's and uh, talk to the people who have been there a lot right. longer. Yeah, yeah. Um, to me, that's what it is, and I'd go back there tomorrow if I could. Yeah, yeah. It's just oh, unfortunate well. the way that went, but yeah, I got talked out of going ag flying, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you, can, you can blame Barry Tibbs for that, because right. I wanted to go ag flying. I did a bit of did a stint with managerial top dressing, right, and I uh, had a plane lined up for me and everything like that. And Barry said, I don't want you to go egg flying. Yeah. He said, uh, you know, it's a different game and what have you. He said, you're a good engineer. 
He said, go and do something else. So I ended up back in New Guinea. Oh, what and, a uh, But I've never ever forgotten the ag industry. Yeah. You know, my, I just really loved it. Excellent, excellent. And um, oh, in some ways, I'm glad that I didn't go that way. Right. Lost a lot of friends. Yeah. And the way the industry's gone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But at the same time, it's, well, I've just arrived back from Cairns tonight. In Australia, yeah, okay. yeah, and yeah. came straight from Cairns to here today to be here for the 50th. Bloody oaks, good on you. All right, well, that message going flat, so uh, we might get back to you later on. Okay, well, I hope you enjoy the weekend and uh, we'll catch up to you. Thanks very All right, much. Thanks a lot. Well, this is the uh, uh, near the end of the night there, uh, Clive. You can see people are still um, uh, having a good yarn and um, uh, talking about tomorrow's air show, and uh, we should be a doozy. And they've got a few more people just hanging around here, just having a good time and talking and uh, trying to avoid the camera, but uh, not too much success. Yeah. Oh, they, these guys aren't trying yeah. to avoid it. <laughs> and um, yeah, we'll be uh, cutting away in a few minutes and uh, going out to Fielding Airstrip, yep. where the uh, where the show is on. And um, I think it's uh, it's about an hour and a half program, so a good hour and a half. So there's all sorts of aircraft flying around, yeah. and uh, should put a good show on for the, for the boys. A bit of reminiscing of the old days and see how the aircraft, it will see the aircraft still flying and uh, see what they can do. Yep, that's right, Murray. That's the way my thread goes. There's Noel, I see again. Noel Nguyen. Putting his foot down and <laughs> saying, I'm not going to do it again, but uh, I'll bet you 10 bucks you will be. Yeah, you will be. Another five years. <laughs> yeah. All telling their stories. Long oh, yeah. ones and short ones. Yeah, well, there's Keith from uh, from Marson, Peter yep, Wilcox, yep. Peter Wilcox, yep. and Brian. Um, uh, 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 oh, he was an old, he was an old egg pilot, stuck an egg right. pilot from the Harrow area. Yep, that's right. Brian Moore. Mm -hmm. And there's uh, Bob Scott on the right there. Yep. He's an old helicopter pilot, an old experienced okay, pilot yep. from the past. Yep. Many, many, many moons of top listing with Bob, way back. <laughs> Amazing, everyone's got a bit grey. There's Reed Kay again from Australia. Yep. He's too late to drive here in Marston. Yep. That's right, that's right. Robert Thurston again. Yep. He's still flying, he's a Marston. Yeah, still Bob's flying. still yeah. flying in Marston, yeah. yes. Yeah. And there's uh, Jeff Griffiths. Jeff and Griffiths, yeah. And Bob, Bob Cranston. Bob Cranston again. Yes. And another one on the left, I can't remember his name now. Um, familiar faces, but some we haven't seen them for a long while, you know. Some of the younger guys. Yep. It's great to see the uh, the younger people coming still into the industry and yep. keeping it get going. That's dead right. Now, here we've got the, uh, the Saturday afternoon's uh, briefing before the air show, and uh, we'll just uh, let it sort of cruise along and um, let it sort of say its own thing. And uh, we'll come in again and uh, describe the actual planes when they're flying and, um, and uh, see how we get on from there, Clive, all right? Yep, right, around. Okay, Dickie. We've got a coming along aircraft. top mission will be Hang out water from just outside the hangar here, from the water source here, the water here, the help from the uh, main approach is getting loaded now. Uh, again, thanks for lying up the way you did, that's great, that's good. Prior to caution things, we've got the moment, we've got this end of the vehicle, we've got the horses, and we've got the build-up area, and the same with the other end of the vehicle here, up here, here and horses as well. Uh, so please, pull your turns away from the, that area there, out there, free space out here, and also the free down area out here. So, Make sure we've got turns away from this area here and right over there as well. Uh, we've got one of the radio frequency, but we're sticking our schedule there. I've actually got a base radio ahead, possibly, but a base radio to work with, but that is the intended type schedule. Uh, if there's any problems, uh, I'll just let you know. Thanks very much. 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 Variety of this operation, and no big bloody heroic like we had last time. That scared the shit out of me. So, so please keep it safe, keep it professional. Uh, it's got a lot of public people here today, public looking at the show as well. Uh, this got a good show for the end. It's professional. This show, we are professional. We're going to do. Uh, keep, please keep care of all the build-up areas, and all flying will be done yeah, on the sway line or beyond it. 
Starting up was BAT. Uh, I first went through that aircraft way back in 1953. Now belongs to Sport and Vintage Aviation Master, belongs to Tom Williams. Right. How, how old was this aircraft be, Clive? Well, it, it came from us in the in early in '52. All right. Here you see uh, rotor wing the there, the old Robbie, Rob yeah. Robinson R22. That's right. Still yeah. uh, used for um, ag work in New Zealand. Yep. Uh, I think it was mainly designed for uh, passenger or commuter type flying, but uh, the old Kiwis are sort of put into a sort of um, uh, more more of a, a work, work workhorse type situation. Yeah, it's a good training aircraft too. Yeah, we and Wake can try that one, I think. This is a uh, Hiller 12E, another good old workhorse uh, from the 60s and 70s. Yes. Um, still flying in the, in the country here. Yep. Yeah, the old uh, Fletcher, I think, yes. I'm not sure what, what yeah, uh, model this is. If you're 24, it's a 400. It's a 400, right, yep, yep. yep. Uh, the backbone of the ag industry in New Zealand, I'd say, would, would that be correct? Yes, that? now, mostly Fletchers are found in this country for backbone, yes. Right. VDE, I think that was old, uh, used to come from uh, Manamato, I dropped this in the I think that aircraft was, a flew up itself, I think, in those early days. Looks like the 188B or the 188. I'm not too certain now, Mario. Okay. Yep. 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 But, uh, it's a pretty sleek looking aircraft oh, too. Nice. I say yes. A bit of grunt behind it yep. too. Okay. You come up to here to no, the uh, uh, the Ag Cat, the Ag -Cat. PD6 motor in it. Yeah. Helen Griffin's aircraft. Okay. Yeah. Right. And, uh, air, Hel tractor. Helen, uh, air, air tractor. Air, air, air tractor. Air tractor. Oh, tractor. right. Okay. Yep. Yep. This is in the line waiting for the show yeah. to start. And oh, here we go. What's yeah. this one here? Then this is a. This, uh, this is once again very similar to the one. The, the, the ag wagons are very similar in design. Right. Some of them made in Australia. Yep. Yep. And that looks like the uh, either the once again one of the 88 or 188 B. Right. Okay. Yep. Oh, here's a here's a well known and one. Here's the old faithful old Fletcher. Yep. And once again, I'd say that's the 400. Yep. So these guys we sort of talking about yeah. uh, how they flew it and uh, oh yes all there yeah yes and there's the egg wagon the egg wagon yeah another one yep yep so they're all kind of cousins to one another yeah very right yes. design yep yep but, uh, they were a delight to fly <coughs> all pilots of them like them yep. Yeah. Daddy. Once again, here comes the Fletcher. Yeah. Yeah. This is a, a, a turbine. Turbine, turbine, yep. That's right, and I didn't know where it was. Is that the Cresco? Is that the Cresco? Is that the Cresco, yep. yep. Okay, yep. Uh, big power improvement, eh, oh, with, with yes. the turbine. They've got, some, they've got some grunt in front there now. Oh, I'd say so. Look at PA-18 sitting behind there. Oh, the yeah. Super Cub. Super Cub? Yep. Yep. I've been used down south more than up north here. Okay, right. Software. Yep. <laughs> BKN. BKN, yep. yes. Keep them in nice order. Okay, another, go another one would another be one. Yep. with the with the ag ag wagon. Yep. Oh, it's a KBRU. BRU, that's a P eighteen from uh, I think this one is as as comes from Marston. Okay. Yeah, it belongs to Hugh and Mackay, I'd say that one is, by the look of it. It's been rebuilt. Yeah, very really nicely too, I'd say. Yep. Yes, yeah, some old pilots probably looking at that one. And, oh, yeah. and this is the uh, air truck. Okay, this is the Keith Turner from, 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 from Keith Turner and Marston. From the Marston, yeah. yeah, right. Okay. There are very few of them in the country now. This is the only one flying. I wouldn't be 100% certain of that, but yep, uh, there's yep. very few of them flying in the country yep. now. And it's the key strange looking aircraft. Very yeah. strange looking aircraft. But uh, according to Keith, it's a, it's a joy to fly. Right, yep.
Just like an egg with yeah. wings, isn't it? <laughs> and we're on, we're on Aviation's uh, Fletcher. Yep. Well, sorry. That looks once again like the 400. Yep. And once again, we come to the good old faithful tag wagon again. Yep. Once again, as I was saying, there's, there's quite a few of those aircraft are very similar in design. It's right. hard to pick them out. That looks like a good lineup uh, of aircraft. Yes. There's another another uh, turbine. The turbine, that's yeah, one of the Eric ones, yep. I'd say, yep. yes. Yeah, and they, yeah. um, they put on a very good show too uh, at, the, at this display. Yes, yes. Uh, plenty of power. Any power um, and, and, and very nice to rehearse yep. and, uh, and very professional flying by the yep. three Harding boys. Yep. Ring to gear services, Fletcher. Yep. Yes. Mm. Another turbine. Yep. Mm. I think the three of them are lined up there by the look of it. Yep. Yep. Mm. Last one here. Yep. This last one here we've got here of. Uh, yeah. Wanganui's. Yeah, went to Harding uh, boys. Another, another, um... It's the turbo, it? Yep. Cresco. Yep. Yeah, okay. Oh, well, that, that's the line-up for uh, the air show, and uh, the boys yeah. are just having the briefing at the moment, and, uh... uh well, just about to uh, take more. off shortly. Yeah. Oh, well, shortly, right now, actually. Um, this yep. is the, um, the, the, the Tiger going yep. through its displays. Yep. Now this Tiger moth is actually uh, fitted with um, a whisper mode engine, so that the, <laughs> you can't really hear it uh, flying, which was which made it good during uh, the First World War, yeah. um, just to sneak up on things. No, actually, what happened was um, we had technical uh, difficulty at the start of the air show. Uh, the microphones weren't switched on. Yeah. Uh, the show actually caught us unaware, so. Um, uh, we haven't got any sound on this uh, on this bit yeah. uh, until the actual landing when he comes yeah. into land. So unfortunately, we haven't got the uh, the beautiful noise that yeah. it makes um, as it flies over. Yeah. But uh, uh, I think we've um, people have flown in this aircraft, have flown it, uh, certainly know what the sound sounds like. And yeah. Uh, so this one I personally flew. Uh, all right. Okay. When it first came out in uh, 1954. Uh, the bigger pattern in 52, 53. That's when uh, we got the, this one up for air, air contracts. My twin brother, who's uh, now left the circuit, uh, personally flew that one himself, and I flew its sister ship, BAS. Did and you fly together? Or yes, a lot, a lot together. A lot together, yep. yeah. Doing different, same jobs. Yeah, and the yeah. pilot in this one now is Johnny Barge from Martinborough, who uh, uh, has got a lot of flying, air flying behind him now over the last 15 or 20 years. But uh, he hasn't had a great deal of time in the Tiger Moth, Bob, and he really could did a type rating on this only within the last six months. All right. But, of course, uh, John is very, very experienced and uh, has no trouble with this. Now, is this, this aircraft kept in Martin Barrow or is it based in mm. Marston? No, uh, it's based at the uh, Sport Venture Aviation Society. Oh, in Marston? Yes. At, at Hood Aerodrome? At Hood Aerodrome, okay, yeah. Right. And is it available for, for rides? Yep. I yes. think I've seen uh, people um, going for rides in these, in these aircraft and That's they can right. go up there, they can turn up and say, have a have it a ride, and uh, yep. the boys will take you out for a bit of a spin. That's right. Yep. And they all, all every person who's been up the tug must thoroughly enjoys it. Here she comes in now to land, and uh, oh, that's a lovely sweet yes. Yeah, and Bob, I'm I think we're in, I don't know why I keep on saying Bob. It's John. 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 Yep. John. Yep. 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 Oh, 
drop in and get it for you. It's like a very movable and uh, solid looking aircraft. Lovely way to roll, yeah. yeah. There's a certainly a better number than the last five years ago to go to the plane of aircraft. Yeah, I was there for the for the, for the 45th, that was five years ago, and had a bit of a drizzle, had a few spits and uh, Pretty cold, um, but this time it wasn't too bad actually. It was, it was a bit overcast. But yeah, yeah. Right, so we stick a little bit under the seat of those regulations, so not to uh, to uh, overdo it or turn any other way. So they are you know, trying to. Uh, Kick right back to low key. Yes, because one must have sort of so upset the soil aviation and that's right. Uh, the, uh, the miners off the aviation. Yeah, of course, one wouldn't want to upset them no. too much because they get a little bit annoyed uh, sometimes. Yeah. And, um, and, uh, yeah. 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 None of these boys have to prove a point, they all know how to fly well and they're right. They're right. And, uh, no, no worries about any problems there. The baby's coming to land now, are you? Ah. Very nice landing yeah. too. And BKN here, Clive, um, yes. taken off for his, uh, his show. Yes, that was uh, yeah, used extensively in the in the 50s and 60s as a top racing aircraft, and uh, and uh, who, all who flew them uh, also liked his aircraft. When did, did uh, this aircraft sort of start flying? It was in the in the uh, in the fifties. The, the P-18s came into uh, in the top dressing role and proved very successful. The, the only thing, like all top dressing, is that uh, its load capacity was limited, and of course, always looking to carry heavier loads. Therefore, the aircraft had to be increased in size and and power, and. Uh, they were replaced later on by heavy aircraft, but uh, during their reign, uh, they, they did well and and uh, and did a very successful job. No, I think I think I might be right. They were used a bit in the venison industry too. I think down yes, south, flying yes, uh, that's right. carcasses out from yep. the valleys and down south. Yep. Yeah, they've had a most of them put all through the roles of of. Uh, of different uh, types of work that carried out, apart from top dressing. This one has been flown by Ross Crawford. And do you have any idea where this aircraft is based at all? No, I don't know. I yeah, know. Yeah. He could have crushed an egg there, Maria. Yeah? Mm. Mm. Probably uh, last night was a pretty heavy night for the young yeah, like Ross. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. 
is now a toothpaste machine. Obviously not to use photography anymore now, just privately owned by the look of it. Yep, I'd say so. That's the next one that's coming up to view. Oh, no, right. This is the, uh, is this the 180 or the 180? This is the 180 BDE. BDE? Yes. No, uh, they're lovely aircraft, the 180. Many pilots like myself flew them for many years and uh, enjoyed them. And uh, they had a great role of, of uh, supply dropping, top dressing, spraying, and uh, quite a lot of different uh, jobs she was used for. So it's quite a capable sort of beast, oh, uh, all lovely. sorts of. Uh, Dry spraying, wet spraying. Yep. Air spraying. Yep. yep. But anyone who flew 180s would tell you that it was one of the nicest aircraft they've flown and the light flown. Right. Where's he gone? That was a fast pass. No, <laughs> oh, nice pull up there at the end there. Yep. Yeah. That is big. Coming in for his landing now. <laughs> and he's coming in now, I think, coming in for his approach. Yep. Those flaps fall down, I'd say. Yes. You will see if we can do a nice three pointer. The 180 is a hard one to do with a spunk top undercarriage, too. Oh, right, yep. So very nice, execute a, a, a nice three pointer, but still, we'll see. I think he's oh, calling right. us, you know. I think he's doing a low pass. Hey, he's flat. Yeah, he has oh, done, too. We're trapped there, Mario. Yeah, I think so. We'll get him on, on the next pass, I think. Yep. This is the right man flying this. It's, it's Clyde Rollins. I think it could be, yeah. Yep. I think he likes our pandas when they come down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Stable aircraft at low speeds. Down. Well, I think it was a wheel tail down wheeler. Yep, yep, yep. So. <coughs> Once again, these are now not top dressing, there's no hopper in there, so she's a privately owned. Right. Uh, it must be the Adricola, is that right? Now we have the Adricola flown yeah. by John Stevenson. It's a uh, 
old workers of the past. When will this have started flying, top dressing wise? I remember. These were in the, in the mid 50s. Mid 50s. When the uh, 58, 59 period. Are they um, New Zealand built aircraft or are they from overseas? They, they, they were from England. From England, yes. right. They were made over there and uh, it had great potential, but it, uh, for some unknown reason, it never never went beyond uh, the stage it was in now. It never, it never increased the horsepower. Right. And uh, this is the only one left in the world. Is that right, they yeah? stopped manufacturing yep. them. Yep. For reasons. You had to fly on them yourself at all? Yes, I flew them and uh, no, no, nice, nicely manoeuvring aircraft, but uh, my love in, in that when they were around was for the 180s and right. uh, yep, yep. I stayed mainly on them. And what's for a load with, with one of these sort of... The well, it's a up? long time, but I think for memory, but uh, around about a 12, 1400 weight. All oh, right, okay, yep, yep. Very wide under carriage, um, yep. good for strip handling. Yep. As uh, and, and, and at low speeds, very manoeuvrable, as you can see now. This was re restored by Claude Stevenson's company way back in Martinborough years ago. Okay, right. In Martinborough, you say? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a man by the name of um, Lou Damon. Was main oh, main right, I remember Lou, yeah, yep, that's right. It, uh, had rebuilt it, Ford. And they phased them out, I think, and they went on to ag wagons after that. Very manoeuvrable. Yes. Quite a quick yeah. turn there. Yep. You come yes, around some, again. Some pilots who flew them, uh, like Marston Base Pilot those days, was Freddie Myers and right. yep. Jim Thorne, yep. my own brother, he flew them and uh, they, they liked it. That's what the lovely aircraft of Lloyd's. Comes in for his landing. Lovely touchdown. Lovely. Yep, mm -hmm. absolutely lovely. And yeah, have the one eight five. The one eight five. The, uh, this could be flown by Robin Langlow. Langslow. Langslow, yeah, I think yeah. so, yep. Looks like this one here is still working. It's, uh, he's got all his uh, spray equipment up. on and yep. tanks and spray gear. Yes, yep. Yeah, it's still operational, I say, this aircraft is. The 185. Well, that's amazing stuff. Like yeah. He's almost clipping the grass. Yeah. Eh? Yep. Yeah, the 185 really replaced the 180 in the latter part of the 180s time, and right. uh, but they never, they never actually went to eight expectations. Uh, right. What was the difference between the 185 and the 180? Oh, a bit more horsepower, or they had a slightly higher horsepower motor, in, but the the, the 185. Uh, and performance on takeoff wasn't as good as the 180. Right. right. And uh, at low speeds, she mainly because I think she had a uh, the same the same uh, larger fuse fuselage, but uh, the same wing area as 180, oh, so she yep. wasn't quite as stable. But uh, just the same, a lovely aircraft to fly. I flew them personally myself and enjoyed them.
most playing time was spent on the 180s, and slightly different was the old Swarthmaster. Okay, right, From yes. Different. Yep. And how many of these would be spraying in the country? Not yeah, very many now. Uh, just not many now. A handful? Yeah, just a handful now in the workforce. It's like we always slowly as we get older we get out of touch with these uh, right. what's going on in the egg world, yes. Yeah, pull up. Let's pull up. Yeah. What, you know, do you know what sort of tonnage these aircraft would, when they were flying super? What sort well, of with, the, with the super, well, we were, we're, we're, we're taking uh, out around about the 14... 1400 weight. Yeah, 1400 right. weight, the 180s, 185s, I mean, up to 14, weight maximum. And that was on a good strip. Right. There wasn't very many around then. No. <laughs> ah, what have we got here? Uh, the old uh, Hello 12E. That's right, in, Hello. In, yep. in for his um, display. Yep. Paul Green flying this one. Right. Got the twin tanks on the side. Yep. Uh, big spray booms. Yep. That one dates back a few years. Yeah, I remember flying of these things uh, in the old forestry days. Um, that would be in the 70s, flying in hut yeah. materials and, and food for the hunters and that sort of stuff. Yeah. And uh, uh, for, I think I remember rightly, it was Alexander's. Alexander, yeah. Aero Works or somebody, Alexander's. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. You might be showing our age here, Clive. Yeah, this is right. <laughs> An old, old uh, Raspberry pilot, probably Bob Scott, be looking at this one. Yep. He used to fly them. We did see them occasionally in the Y Rapper here in the very early days. Yep. Yeah, fire rightly, they used to be able to take about um, six, seven hundred pound on the hook um, yeah. for old airdrops and that. I suppose yeah. um, that, that close to about 60, 70 gallons, 80 yep. gallons of of, uh, of liquid, I suppose, in the yeah, tanks. That's, that's right. Yeah. I don't know who owns this one now. Is that one, that one is? Uh, Hollywood. Uh, oh, is it? Yeah, Hollywood on this. Oh, yep. Yeah. Certainly, certainly look nice, don't they? Mm. Yeah, very, very yeah. nice. Yeah, pretty good, good for um, spot spraying. Yep. Um, real low level. Yep. We go down on the cop. Yep. And of course, if you miss a bit, you can always uh, just hold it in and give it a bit of a squirt. And go back uh, and do it again. And go back and do it again, you know, sort of um, yeah. a bit tricky to do in the old uh, Cessna, I'd say. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> Flying sideways there, sort of yeah. going to the show. Yeah, he'll come back in there. Yeah, put his nose down and tail up and he'll be going forward again. Here we go, yeah. yep, that's right. 
Pull up a bit of a wing over there, or and then this would be a nice uh, oh, landing. Over. Should be coming in for landing now, I suppose. Isn't it? Yep. Inside, yep. Let the pack up again. Yep. And he's down. Ah, here we go. Off now with the 188 B. Okay. An American egg plane flown by Bob Mons. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> well, we it's changed here. We've changed. He's gone to a. Uh, well, this looks like now um, George Hedderside and Gary Yardley. Gary's just joined Top Dressing with right. um, John Barge's company, and it's his. Uh, He's got just accumulated a few hours now. He's still under training right. under, under Johnny Barge. And uh, George Hedderside and the Fletcher, of course, is the one that's... Well, so we're getting mi mixed up now because... Yeah, they might have been taken off just no, to park up off. somewhere. Yeah. So there of, uh, um, be right. And the old Falcon coming in. Yep. Yeah, I think there's other two might have been just taken off just to yeah. um, park up somewhere and... Uh, Coming for a display very soon. Well, let's see. Yeah. Uh, it'll be the oldest and the youngest in the country. Yeah. Yep. There you go. So, what's this one? What's the aircraft climb? This is the 188B. 188. B Cessna. 188B Yak plane. Yep. It's American Yak plane. Bit of grunt? What sort of, what sort of, of grunt? What sort of motor in these things? I'm not certain now. Sort of horsepower. Uh, but they'd be around the, uh, the 300, 300, I think. 300, right. Yep. They've been going for a while too, these aircraft. Oh, quite a few for years, a few years, years now. now yeah. Yeah. They've been going for yeah. many years now, yeah. yes. Good proven workhorse. Oh, yes. And here now comes okay. George Shadowhide and the Fletcher and uh, Gary Yardley. The oldest and the youngest, eh? The oldest and the youngest. And Gary's flying the 188 Cessna. Right. Young pilot from Marston. Right. Who George was? No, uh, oh, young uh, Gary Yardley. Gary Yardley, right. And George is, the, is an old uh, fielding man. Uh, or George is mainly Manama 2. Manama 2, right, yeah. okay, yep. He's based over there for many years. He's flown around yep. the country quite a bit, but he's been based mainly in Manama 2 for many, many years. He's just turned 71. And still flying, eh? And still flying. Yep. So great effort, great record. I met George many, many years ago when he first started top dressing and he came to the Wild Rapper to do a few few jobs over here or over the Wild Rapper and uh, that's where we all met up for the first time. Mm -hmm. Nice low pass yeah, the old DL, DLQ. Yep. Yeah. A few of the spectators sort of enjoying the event. Yes. Quite a, a global crowd out there. And here comes young Gary. Once again, they're still very much in line with the, the egg wagon style, aren't they? Very much so, mm. design-wise. I yep. could be wrong, but I think this is an Australian version. I, I'll be corrected by many guys if I'm, <laughs> if I'm not right, but they believe it was an Australian design. Here comes Georgian. There's 
soon to come scary in now. He's in the uh, Cessna 188, isn't he? Yeah, that's right. Yep. Just doing his, as I say before, just doing his training. Yep. And now showing super and starting the long journey with a fishing boat. Yep. And he looks like a 300. Yes, yeah, a 300, I think it is. Yeah, Fletcher, yep. Pretty long DOS. I'm not sure no, it could be, it could be, uh, no, I think that one is the 400. Yeah, he, he might have been just, just taken off yeah. just to park up somewhere again. Yeah, that's the 400, um, yeah, Steve, Steve Hardy. Fooey. Fooey. Yeah, Fooey. Steve oh, right, yep, yep. He's in a leg plane, yeah. Yep. We flew the, in our day, we flew the Fletcher's, the 225 motors. 225? Yes, and uh, a lot of difference. Yeah, it's almost double the power, isn't it? Yep. Double the horses. Mm. Yep. So, uh, certainly changed a lot. These will carry up to around the 2300 weight, and all laden up. 2300 weight. Mm -hmm. That's uh, a ton. Yep. Another, another ton. Yep. Another New Zealand aircraft. Yeah, these may be. Oh, Fletcher's. Yeah, yeah Fletcher's. Hamil Fletcher's. Yep. yep, that's right. That's right. Ozzie James brought the first one to the country. Yep. And, and with Guy Robbie. So he brought it from, from where, Australia or, or from the States? They, they, these came from the States. The States. Yep. And they, they were all the, all the modifications and, and carrying out mods on them and all that have been done in New Zealand, the improvement is for the right. years. Yep. So when they were in America, they were, were a top-dressing aircraft again? No, they were brought out there for, for, um, for, from the States, and uh, trials were carried out over there. Right. So it was suitable for top-dressing okay, by Joe right. Robbie and Ozzy James. Yep. And so they, so they approved, and, and it came out in this country, because Ozzy James took over the production of them, right, okay. assembling them in this country. Yep. So they weren't exactly designed for, for top-dressing in the States? Not for my knowledge, yep. no. Okay. A man by the name of Sticky Gummer was one of the first pilots in the in the country. He flew for uh, I'm not sure it was Ozzy James or Guy Robbie now um, in Hamilton. Right. Based there. That was the very earliest model that came in. I can't remember the registration of it, but I saw him when I was up there converting on the pictures myself in 1954, flying the very earliest model. Now we have Keith Turner taking off in the, uh, oh. yep. Sky Farmer? Sky, Sky Farmer? Farmer. Yep. yep. This is an Australian model. They didn't pay for, come from Australia, Port of Australia, New Zealand. Because they were quite a race there a few years back, and then they sort of oh, well, went yeah. out of fashion. Yes. Um, they, yeah. And they sort of slowly sort of melted away, and yep. then, now they sort of is back again. Yes, well, uh, this is one of the really few in the country now right, flying. Yep. The Fletcher uh, seems to have taken over the main role of top dressing in this country now. Right. But uh, Keith Turner is a very experienced pilot, flown all, all, all types of ag aircraft, plus uh, rotary aircraft. And uh, as you remember, he, he demonstrated that aircraft, uh, the, the um, what was it when he flew last, and the five years ago, and the big one? Um, it's Sikorsky, yeah, that's Sikorsky, 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 Sikorsky right yeah. wing, yeah. That's right. And now he's uh, back on the fixed wing. On this one again, yeah. And he enjoys it.
It has a lot of spraying also with the same aircraft. What sort of uh, horsepower will this thing be running? Any idea? Three, four hundred? It, 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 to be quite honest, you've got me there, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, but um, I'd say she should be around the four hundred. Yeah. Right. It's a three beta. Yep. Yep. Very manoeuvrable and very um, capable aircraft again, too, yep. isn't it? Great rate of roll. Yep. <coughs> yes. <coughs> so I've never flown one myself, but the uh, pilots have, have I've talked to have flown them. One, namely, uh, from Marston, Ken Wilcox, and uh, that's right. Yes, Ken is a pilot. Yes. He, uh, he he enjoyed them. I remember Marston, there used to be two or three of them we used to fly yeah, to Marston. There was Ken Wilcox. Yeah. Uh, did Robert Thurston fly them as well? I'm certain Robert did. Um, Neville Worsley. That's right. I think he had a problem one time and uh, went over on his back when he... Okay. He had an engine failure. Up near Manaya Road there. Okay. Yeah. Neville sees his tape, he'll remember it. Yes or no. <laughs> but I think it was... Yeah. No air contracts or, or air, right. ser air services yes, really services, had them. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's right. Well, he's coming for a landing, or yeah. is he going to give a low pass? I think, he's in the, I think he's in the chopper, doesn't he? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, straight down. Yeah. That's right, cheap. Down. A beautiful yeah. landing. Yep. Oh, well, that's what experiencing gives you. Yep. Lovely display, that one. Uh, yeah, yeah, very good. Oh, the Robinson R22. Yeah, uh, that's it. This will be in Wakeland. In Wakeland, yep. Mm. Put some yeah. nice show on, too. Yep. Ian's been going for many, many years. I think he went through the school of Berwick Delcom years ago. I could be corrected by him, but I think he did. And uh, has had a very good, successful gear in top dressing. And spraying and flying choppers. I'm not sure what sort of uh, payload they would carry, but it looks like the tank would be looking around about the old uh, 30, 40 gallon yeah, tank. Probably. Oh, yeah. right. You'd know more about that, Murray, than me, wouldn't you, then? You, 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 you were quite yeah. involved with them for a while there. Yeah, not so much the Robinsons. Yeah. Um, the Hillers and, and the 500s, oh, especially, yes. especially the Hillers. Yes. Um, It's amazing what these aircraft can be put to, you know, so when they were first designed, they were designed as a commuter aircraft just to get the old executives from That's right. from home to the office. Yep. Um, and the old Kiwis come along and throw a tank on it and um, uh, use it for all sorts. There's uh, right. helicopter recovery, yep. um, spraying as you can see here. Yep. Um, they weren't specifically designed for this work. No, and they, no. they could do it like That's the right. 180s and the... That's and the, right, the yep. Yep. Type of thing, 185s, beavers. Looks like he's coming for a bit of a hover. Yep. That looks like he's going to park it. Park it up again. He's going to put this wrong. Yep. Put his foot down on one side there, spinning around. Yeah, yeah, he's parking mm. it. Yep. Looks like the uh, the latest Ozzy, GA two hundred C. Yeah, Ray Patchett. Yeah, line, Ray Patchett. Line, yeah, yep. Patchell, Yeah, Patchett. Ray Patchett. Yep. Yeah.
like motor cars now, aren't they? Nowadays yeah. they're hard to pick. Yep. The difference in the design is so yep. similar. Yep. Neodrome is certainly going to be a good dusting of super. Yeah, I saw it doing quite well too. Probably I got a funny feeling that most of them might be lying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love the colour scheme on the wings. Yeah, beautiful, yeah. Sticks out. Yep. Very sturdy aircraft, very strongly built, I would say. He's off into the sun. Mm -hmm. <coughs> Slow pass mm -hmm. this time, yeah, I'd say. Time, yeah, yep. got a flap down there. Yep. They'd be coming into land now. Pretty good visibility too in those ones, I'd say. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We should have the Husky 400 coming up shortly, shouldn't we? Yeah, could be, yeah. Now this is, now let's see. Dave. Now this is the, um, oh, this is a Helic Griffiths um, like air cat, isn't it? Yes, it looks like it. He might, he might, just be, he might just landed yeah. to come in for the show, I think. Yes. That's the PD6. Hey, 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 hey. Yeah. Back cat. Back cat, yep. yep. This must be the, uh, the Husky 400, I think. Could mm. be hit. Dave Worm. That'll be hit. Yep. 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 Dave Worm flying. Any history on this one here, Clive? Sort of um, any ideas when these sort of things evolved? These, these aircraft? No, as I say, 
that uh, that design, of course, is the is the same as the old the the the, 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 the general design. Yes, is, is, is based around much the same. Yeah. They are. There's about three it's aircraft there, yeah, all, all look very similar. Yeah, that's right. And to get the history on these ones now, it's too far back for me to remember. But right, certainly got an increased horsepower. Oh, nice shot there as it goes yeah, up there. Yep. Beautiful. Yep. Nice low pass. Beautiful. How would he be generating that smoke? Is he? Um yes, and it certainly was just, was just training what he's got his left, what he's got left on the hopper. Yeah. For, for, for a bit of a play, is it? Well, I'll tell you how to finish up his display there. Uh, yeah, coming in, yep. Yep. Yeah, very Now we have a picture of the uh, turbo. Yeah, looks like a turbine, yeah. yeah. Turbine conversion. I think it's a 600, um, a Fletcher M601D. Yeah, that's I think it. Is. That'll be the one. Not sure who's flying this one. No. Um, no. So he's coming in for his run now, I think. Yep. They certainly have a distinctive sound, don't they? Different altogether, isn't it, with the turbo? Yep. Well, I've gathered from the pilots who fly them now, talk to enjoy the aircraft now yeah. with increased power and in, in the turbo. There he goes now. Yeah, yeah it appears to be lying, Mario. Yeah. So expensive day out for the super. Oh, yeah. Well, good, good, good for the airfield, though. Yeah. <laughs> Make the grass grow. Mm. Straight up. Straight up. Yeah. Stick, stick straight back there, Clive, are you thinking? Yep. Yep. Well, you, you can pull it a bit now.
Yeah, I think this will be the low pass. Up. Yep. A little bit. And here he comes down. Yeah, he's landed. Man, yes. We should have a helmet going up now, visually. There's egg. On the egg cat. Yeah, the egg cat should be next. Makes sure it just flaps down and it must cost him half a dozen of beer. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his face, he probably knows it too, I'd say. <laughs> now the three boys here lining up ready to um, yeah, the hay show. Boys. It's the hay and boys. Yeah. Here comes Hallett now with nice his... Hallett. Yep, with the air cat. Yep. yep. Mm -hmm. The American turbines. American design, is it? Yeah. This used to have a uh, radial that was converted to a the P D six motor put in that. Okay. Yeah, head. actually, I think I remember seeing this at the last show. Yeah, it was with, with, a, with a radial from the Rotley. Did you have a radial um, in the Yes, in the early ago? part, yes. Yeah. And then it's now converted into a. Uh, Inline motor, the P P D six. Turbine? Yep. It's P D six. Turbine. Still it's been flying this for quite a few years now. Yeah. And yeah. Is it used for um lime sewing or is it just sort of liquid or, or can it be uh, used it's, for anything? No, yeah, it's, it's for anything, yes, top yep. dressing, lime spraying. Yep, yep. It's quite, quite a versatile aircraft. Yep. He's got spray gear on there as you'll see now. Yep, yep. Also attached. Quite a solid aircraft too, I'd say, wouldn't it? It's sort of, strong, um, solid very strong. Built. Yep. Works off uh, reasonably small airstrips, you know. Right, yep. Even though they all have, uh, <coughs> for regulations, the, aircraft, the, the uh, airstrips are now, uh, 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 the regulations are a lot longer. Right, yep. In the old days. Yep. Civil aviation uh, creeping yes. in again. Yep. Yep. Yeah. But safety. Safety is right. Yep. yep. The farms have become aware of it over the years. Yep. Just a pile of snake at the risk there. And That's right. The more strip available, the better. Yep. Turn around. Yep. Very maneuverable aircraft.
to slow pass slow over. Slow pass, slow pass, yep. Mm -hmm. The weather's certainly good for it, isn't it? Yeah, we're very lucky well. this time here. Yeah. Yep. And the rain just managed to stay away. Yes, it came in later, didn't it? Yep, it did. Yep. Same thing, yes. Yep. Here comes the three Harding boys. Oh, no, we've got here. Got, uh, three of them three, coming three of them taking off, yes. Right. The three Crescos is Hammond Harding and John Harding and Bruce Harding. Three brothers. Oh, right, the three brothers. Yep. Okay. Mine's a bit in my old days, and my twin brother and another brother all flew right, together. That's right. What sort of age difference would these guys be in? You know, do you Clive? Well, they, 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 they were all getting up to win <laughs> Well, I've been no teeth in my city here, but <laughs> I think the, the 50s will be getting around yep, uh, yep, John and, yep. and Bridge. Oh, yeah, the boys must be going to park up somewhere while this guy here put, puts a show on. Yep. This must be the... Uh, uh, this now air, is, this air, is the air tractor. Air tractor? Yep. He's flying by John Aaron's, I think. John Aaron's flying this one, yep. yep. So you see this once again... There's very similar similarities design. between the, the three or four different types yeah. of aircraft. Yep. Turbine one as well, this one? Yeah, that appears to be, yes. It appears to be, doesn't it? Yep. Got that uh, distinctive long nose. Yep. yep. Nice sound. Very nice. Mm -hmm. He's saying that a ton to the acre. <laughs> Coming in for a slow pass yep, again. Yep, yep. the second now for the Harding boys to come in. Yep, I think they'll be coming up shortly. Yep. Actually, I think they um, uh, come in with a bit of a this and a roar, so all of a sudden they were, the place is quiet next minute. These three flitches zoomed ahead and... Um, yeah, and that sound of those yeah. turbos yeah. roaring, it sounded very nice. Very yep. good. Just a low pass before we finish up the display. Yep. Mm 
he's coming out for a turn around to come into land. So this should be coming to land now. Yep. As he falters once again. Uh, maybe a landing this time. Again, top wrong, yep. yep. Very wrong, wrong. No, I'd say that but wouldn't be much more than 50 metres, I'd say, yeah, on that. Very good. Yeah. Pretty high tail wheel section there, so yep. the aircraft isn't down near level flight for takeoff. Yep. That's right. Very nice. Here comes the boy. Yeah. I was really surprised at this uh, display. Um, being a bit of a townie, sort of, um, you see shows on television like the Red Arrows and those sort of Air Force type shows, but I've never seen anything done like this with, the, with Fletchers. No, yeah, I was quite amazed actually. I was sort of um, it's quite unique, isn't it? Yeah, sort of. Uh, a lot of other pilots I talked to said, "Oh, yeah, they've been there, done that, they've seen it all before." But um, I was quite impressed actually. Yeah, yeah. very well rehearsed. Each one knows where everyone, each one is, and very well planned. I mean, that, that sort of stuff there you sort of see on. Uh, the Air you know, Force type, the Air Force type mm -hmm. shows and that sort of thing, but when you get some top dressing guys doing it, you mm -hmm. think, what the hell's going on? And, That's right. And, uh, very, very good show. Yep. I think they'll be in radio touch with each one as they go through. Yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, they'd have to be in communication with each other to um, yep. to say in their position. Yeah. Mm -hmm. In their moves. Yep. Yeah, well rehearsed, well done. Do they, um, correct me if I'm wrong, Clive, but do they work for the same company or the three of them or do they? Uh, the, the, the three Harding boys, is, uh, to my yep. knowledge, is, uh, all fly for the same company, the same which company is their own okay. anyway. Yeah. Right, okay, yep. Yep. Yeah, it looks like this yeah, guy yeah, here has lost a piston rod or yeah. something, yeah. <laughs> 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 well, nice that. Got on full reverse pitch. Yep, yeah. full reverse, yep. Another 50 odd metre landing. Yep. Yeah. Uh, you probably can't see where he's going, but. Um, yeah. I don't, think it, I don't think it matters once he's got his wheels on the ground. Yeah. It's quite effective. Yeah, I think this is quite this is quite coming out the front there. This is quite amazing. See? Yeah. Reverse flight. Yeah. And we'll go back up and throw it again. Yep. There he goes. Yeah. The old Very effective, isn't it? Yep. What are they doing, Clive? Are they just putting smoke on a manifold or something? Or yeah, oil, 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 oil on the manifold oil. or something? Yeah, yeah right. Okay. Yeah. Yep. I suppose if you add up all the, uh, I suppose if you add up all the hours these guys are flying and together, there'd be, um, I say, be a few thousand hours well, between, a few the, thousand now, between yes. the three of them. Yes, they've been going a long, long time now, over 30 odd years or more. I think if I am right, 
Did just around well over 35 years, I think. Did just it's Richmond and John. Yep. They'll be probably getting it towards the longest serving pilots right. in the country. Right. Just like the the parent to form and formation again. I'm screaming for the other one to catch up. <laughs> <laughs> Closing up nicely. What have you done this before, Mario? Oh, I think I think <laughs> once or twice, perhaps. I might have done this once or twice before. Very, very nice. Very professional. Tight formation there too, very yep. tidy. Yep. Far enough apart, but not, not too close, not too far apart. Just nicely, mm. nicely formed there. Yep. And do you have any idea how long these guys have been practicing this sort of routine? Sort of oh, quite a few years now, Mario. Yep. Yes, we've been back yep. here at Northern Mass and quite a few years ago doing the same display. Right. And those days were the 400, so... Okay, yep, yep. We've worked onto these and I bet they're having a lot of fun up there. I'd say. Looks like they're splitting to land now, breaking yep. up. Mm -hmm. Yep, here we go. Yeah, line is still landing. Well, that's the end of the air show um, for this weekend, Clive. Uh, what do you think of it? Oh, very good, Mario. Yes, very nicely, very nicely uh, performed by all pilots, and uh, and a credit to the top racing industry. Yep, yep. Saying what it's all about. That's right. And the good crowd yeah. was there too, and they oh, all they enjoyed, enjoyed it. it. And, yes. um, and he's hoping in another five years we can see once again a display by the boys going out uh, so, so a central interest into the country. That's right. There's a lot of money's worth out there. Park, yep, yeah. the three of them, side by side. Yep. And then uh, shutting down and uh, off to the pub, I suppose. I suppose that'll be it. For the ready for the party tonight. Yep. All right, and uh, I'll always see you later on, Clive, and uh, yep. catch on the rest of the night, and I uh, might yep. see you again uh, uh, next five years' time, and yep. uh, we'll take it from there. It's always a pleasure. Okay. Hello, Maria. Barry for me. Yeah. There is a state 
Stay standing. Barry, back on your feet. All right, Dave, where are them? Where's Dave, where are them? Somebody point to Dave for me. There's a hey, Dave, how are you? And Robert Thurston. There he is over there. Where's Helen Griffin? Helen Griffin. Come on, Helen, where are you? Somebody point, I'll there. Helen, stand up, come on. Did he? He's having a bag. Oh, hell. Because I've got to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, those people that we have just named are all criminals. Now, during the David Longy years, these gentlemen flew their aircraft right over Parliament buildings in flagrant disregard for the aviation rules. When you go to the bar, the next drink's on them, all right? <laughs> hey, well done, guys. Congratulations. You can sit down. It's nice to recognise those who have stood up for their industry. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, all right, now for some serious business now. If you'd pay attention for just a few moments, I'd like to ask Noel Kinvick to come forward and say a few words. Noel. They keep talking, I may whistle. Good God. Well, there's one little thing, though, that my friend here missed. There are really two more criminals. One is Alex Foster, and the other, Chris Pask. Please stand up. Now, uh, I think uh, before uh, we get into real serious stuff, we should uh, propose a toast to all our absent and departed friends. Their participation in the industry was ju just as important as all the rest of us. So uh, charge your glasses and have a big drink. Absent friends. I think uh, a lot of thanks have to go to uh, Noel Mangum, Barry Cook, and Dick Jones. <laughs> and their poor wives. <laughs> They've probably had to go through a hell of a lot of suffering, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Around. <laughs> anyway, at the moment I'm living in Budapest and uh, I've come here specially for this function. So um, I'll hand this back to my mate here and hope he can do a better job than me. Thank you, Noel. You did a great job. Well done. Now, I have to introduce to you now our special after-dinner speaker. He is Australian. You know, you can never be sure of the reaction you're going to get to that statement. He is Jim Hazelton. Jim, if you'd like to come forward, I understand he has a few words of wisdom for us all. Oh, good evening, everybody. Well, wow. it's quite loud, isn't it? Um, I'm here at uh, probably under false pretenses that Noel, he's a very persuasive guy, and somehow he managed to rope us into this thing, and, and here I am. God help us. Well, the best thing I can do, I think, is start off by telling you who the Hazeltons are in Australia, <laughs> because I guess about 90% of you here wouldn't have never heard of us. Um, 
we happen to be a flying family, I guess. I've got a brother who's sitting over there now. He owns the airline in Sydney called Hazelton Airlines. His wife's there with him. And uh, I guess that's about all the support I can hope for. <laughs> now, uh, I'll go back to the beginning of it and tell you a little bit about our history over there. And uh, strangely enough, it becomes very entangled with uh, New Zealand along the way. Anyway, uh, it started for me back in 1949 when I decided to uh, ease off from farming and learn to fly. And uh, I think this was brought about because we had a brother in the Air Force and uh, he trained as a fighter pilot. And uh, that was a, what looked to me like a glamour job in those days because I was very safely ensconced at college at the time. There wasn't much chance of me getting involved. I was too young. But uh, Bruce uh, uh, w was very keen on flying. He got into, into the uh, training very late in the war, so he never saw any action. But he did get to fly some nice airplanes like P-51s and Kitty Hawks and things like that. And uh, I think he enjoyed it immensely. And then he went back to farming. Well, I got the idea having one day in Orange during school in about 1944, we were forced to go to church every Sunday, march down there, and uh, we're sitting up in church, and there's about 20 tiger moths arrive over the town. Fancy this on a Sunday morning. And they set to work and they really beat the town up. And uh, the minister, there was a fellow that I didn't have much time for. He, he, he was putting up a, a sermon at the time and I'd never heard the topic of a t sermon change so rapidly. All of a sudden it was these young irresponsibles <laughs> flying aeroplanes that were the topic of, the, of his uh, sermon. And uh, I uh, rather enjoyed that. I managed to get outside to have a look. <laughs> and boy, were, the, were these fellows having some fun. I believe they all got... Uh, Court Martial and marched out of the Air Force over it, but at that stage of the war, that's probably what they wanted anyway. Anyway, uh, so from learning to fly and starting in 49, I, I got qualified in around about 51 and uh, managed to become a junior flying instructor with the Newcastle Aero Club. And from there, uh, it progressed for a couple of years uh, doing that sort of work. And uh, then in the, in the early 50s, uh, my brother Max there and uh, myself, we set up a, a little air taxi operation at 165 miles west of Sydney at a place called uh, Kudal. And uh, from that uh, developed in a, in a a short space of time, the agricultural aviation side. Once again, he was the fellow who initiated that, and uh, I was standing off watching. And I didn't really like too much what, what I saw because the guys that were in ag aviation in those days in Australia it was in its very early infancy and uh, most of them were hard drinkers and, and pretty tough guys. So what's changed? <laughs> um, anyway, uh, yeah, we, we uh, decided that there would be an, an agricultural aviation division to the company and, uh, and that's how it got underway. Uh, Max had a Cessna 180 very early in the piece, in, uh, in which he had a little bit of a mishap, and uh, that forced me into the job, flying an Oster J5. Fortunately, I had a fair bit of time in Osters at that stage, so I managed to survive the uh, learning period. I went, went through a fairly vicious learning curve, and as you all know, it's the hip pocket nerve that usually generates uh, 
the most learning. Uh, and that happened to us plenty of times. But, uh, well, I guess we got there in the end. And uh, by 1956, um, I got to come over here to Palmerston. Now, isn't that a coincidence? And uh, they had put on here the biggest aviation, uh, agricultural aviation air show uh, that I think had ever been run in the world. And boy, what a success it was. It was an absolute credit to New Zealand, that show. I, I learned a heck of a lot uh, from, from it and from associated trips around through the courtesy of Miles King and Phil Lightband, I'm sure he's here somewhere tonight. There he is, yeah. Hello, Phil. Well, we, uh, we, we I took home from that trip some valuable knowledge and, and immediately went into bulk handling of uh, superphosphate, which I think revolutionised the industry in Australia at that time. And uh, our, our tonnages just went mad and the industry saw some very good times indeed. So, uh, uh, follow, following on this, uh, I, uh, a, a little bit further down the line, Max and I had separated our companies then and we uh, operated uh, independently of each other, m more so rather than in opposition, I guess but we were both in the same line of business and I went north and he went south and uh, we managed to keep out of each other's hair most of the time. Um, but uh, I can tell you that the, the, the knowledge I picked up here at that time was a tremendous help and uh, I, I also uh, rather enjoyed a major incident that occurred at that show and I'll bet you there's a lot of people here who will remember it. The Civil Aviation Department of New Zealand. <laughs> they really put their foot in it. I, I can remember it well. I went to the pilot briefing the day before, you know, to have a listen. And, and this guy stood up and with much finger waving. He warned every ag pilot there. He said, any of you guys step one inch out of line, I'll have your license. And the only incident of the show was the Civil Aviation DC-3. <laughs> 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 well, the, the good part about that accident was that it didn't hurt anybody physically. And, and they're kind of nice uh, accidents, I suppose, if you must have one. Um, right, now... <laughs> And just bear with me for a second here. We'll, we'll, we'll try and get back on the track because I ran off the rails there a bit. Um, Max over there who brought us into ag aviation, as you, as you probably already said. And uh, that was after a little episode that he put on in 1954 when he was flying his Oscar J5F across the Blue Mountain from Sydney. And... Uh, he found a cloud with a rock in it. <laughs> and, and I mean, he literally flew straight into a 4,000 foot hill. Bang. But having the good old Hazelden luck, he, he uh, walked away. And uh, when he got his senses back, he eventually walked back to Sydney. <laughs> and I can tell you, it's quite a walk. <laughs> they, they tell me that by the way he went down the river, it's about 80 miles. And um, his boots uh, were a bit worn out when he got there. There were about 40 aeroplanes out there looking for him for a week. And, and things were looking pretty grim. When he turned up as hale and hearty as he is now, he was probably in better shape then. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, that... Uh, I think that was probably the trigger that caused him to get into agricultural aviation because he figured, well, it can't get any worse than that. <laughs> so uh, there we were, and, uh, and, and that's uh, how we got started. Now, <coughs> in, in, the, in the years that followed, uh, 
We'd set up our operation, we're now separate, uh, near Orange on our brother's property. And uh, it was uh, 11 miles out of town. And we had a pretty good setup there. It was a private airfield where we got no interference from the bureaucracy, well, very little. And um, we could come and go as we pleased, day and night, even though night flying was a bit of a legal problem in those days. Uh, but we managed, and then, uh, of course, uh, there was a little town on the way in, a place called Lucknow. It used to be an old gold mining town, and it has a pub in it. And at that time, I think I was employing about 22 people. Strangely enough, most of them were New Zealanders. Well, you have to understand that I'm married to one, so that, that's how it is. And uh, we, we used to stop at this uh, pub you know, on a Friday evening and have a beer. And it's pretty hard to get past without pulling in. And uh, on this occasion, we, uh, we stopped and we were enjoying a quiet beer when apparently there was another group from the town who had also taken up residence in the pub that afternoon and they might have had a few too many beers and one of our chaps uh, must have said something uh, to uh, a young lady that was with one of these chaps and the next thing we know we've, we've got a all-in brawl on our hands in this little pub and I mean that's pretty terrible. <laughs> We, we were lucky, we had engineers, pilots, loader drivers, you know, we had some good fighters amongst them too. <laughs> and the only one that was excluded was the office girl. I don't, I don't know what, how she got out of it, but... <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, the, the fight raged on and I was mainly trying to separate people and try to stop the bloodshed and I end up with a couple of good black eyes myself. And uh, there was um, a sort of a lull in the proceedings and the publican and his wife were desperately anxious to get everybody out the back lawn because the pub was being wrecked. And um, they finally did that. And everybody got out the back on the grass and they kind of formed a bit of a ring around and the, the, the ringleader of the townie group, he, he sort of challenged us and said, well, I'll fight the best man you got. Well, strangely enough, uh, we had a, a young chap who was a great friend of Eric Andrews, who's sitting over there, and uh, Bo Roden was his name, and he'd come over to Australia with Eric, and he'd been trained to fight at the uh, Nelson College. He was the amateur boxing champion there in his time. <laughs> and he was very short in stature and he wore very heavy glasses and he looked quite the studious type. You'd never pick him as a fighter. <laughs> and, and he stepped forward and he said, yeah, you have a go at this fella, you know. And, uh, and so they, they shaped up and the next thing, this guy's on the grass. And he, he sort of shook himself and he got up and... Uh, he, he lined up again and bang, down again. And he didn't bother getting up the next time. And by gosh, we, we, we had very little problem at the Lucknow pub after that, I tell you. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, it, uh, we, uh, I suppose, uh, yeah, that, that was a true story, by the way. <laughs> that that fellow over there can can verify it as he was one of the participants. Um, <laughs> now, as we went down the the years of agricultural aviation, I, I spent uh, well, just on 13 years, I think, as an active ag pilot, and uh, and then I decided to move into other spheres of aviation and, and that was the, back to the advanced flight training, twin engines and um, and moving airplanes around the world uh, if possible. Um, we've been doing a bit of that work for some of uh, your people in New Zealand 
who are also here tonight, so that's nice. And, uh, uh, oh, been flying some beautiful aeroplanes for, for them, the Super King Air, you probably all know, is probably one of the best ferry aeroplanes a fellow could ever wish to get his hands on. And uh, they're just magnificent to fly. Well, you can fly one of those from the United States to Hamilton in a day and a night. <laughs> and, and it's recently been done um, due to the circumstances that caused the aeroplane to be delayed in America. And when it was needed quickly out here, we, we were able to do that with extra crew and so on. So it really, we really have enjoyed uh, some of that sort of work. It's, it's been magnificent. Um, I mean, we also ferry for uh, Ray Patchett. <laughs> There's somewhere there. Ray is. And uh, he's from, anyone that doesn't know it, he's from down in Blenheim and operates the GA200. That's the Australian built Gippsland Aeronautics Aeroplane. Um, we've uh, ferried, I think, all of those over here so far. And uh, Peter from Gippsland Aeronautics is also here tonight. And I'm just wondering if it might be a good time to get them together and see if they could put a heater in. <laughs> <laughs> we spent eight hours from <laughs> Lord Owl Island to New Plymouth <laughs> flying a GA200 at 10,000 feet. <laughs> and I tell you what, you just about have to get lifted out of it when you very rich there, but oh, she's a great little aeroplane, mate. Anyway, <laughs> um, the um, uh, going back to the fer ferry flying and some of the things that have happened there over the years. Um, it was about 18 months ago, I think, roughly. Um, I had a job taking a 260 horsepower. Islander up to America, well over to Florida actually, from Australia. And uh, it wasn't a bad airplane actually, it looked all right anyway. And uh, in fact, there was a modified one, the, the only one in the world that had a long nose, special nose on it uh, for carrying luggage in. Anyway, we ballasted her out pretty good and we had lots of fuel in her. And <laughs> apart from the fact that you know, it, it had no uh, forward speed. Uh, it, it did everything else pretty well. And uh, w we, uh, we took 18 hours and 45, uh, whoops, no, that's wrong, 18 hours and 30 minutes to fly it from Hilo, Hawaii to um, California. That's to the mainland. Uh, it's a long sit. If you want it, but I had a co-pilot on this trip and uh, he, he was a guy that um, had never done a long ferry before <laughs> and uh, I rather enjoyed his reaction but uh, I must tell you that we, we, we took off from uh, Hilo very early in the morning about just on dawn and uh, we headed out across the ocean and after about two or three hours we were able to get above 2,000 feet <laughs> and we, we finally at about nine hours we were halfway <laughs> and uh, oh, things were looking good. I figured that another couple of hours and we'll be able to fly a one engine. And about that time, was late afternoon, the sun <laughs> shining low on the horizon and I look out the right hand side and I see a bit of smoke come out of the exhaust every so often, you know, a little puff of smoke. So I don't know what that is. And we'll I you know, draw his attention to it, and we're both looking at it then, continuously. <laughs> and finally, not only the smoke, now we see oil coming out. And it runs back on the fairing of the undercarriage, and uh, starts to drip down. And it's very hard to know how much oil there is in that. You, you wonder if it's just blowing off into the breeze, and you can't really tell, or or, you know, how long would it take to empty the oil out of the engine? You know, it holds 12 quarts or something like that. 
Well, it took uh, an awful long time because it never happened anyway, I'll tell you now, that's obviously. <laughs> but it kept us uh, pretty active for a long time thinking about it. There wasn't much we could do uh, other than look at it. But that, uh, we thought, well, perhaps we'd better tell uh, San Francisco, I think we were talking to at, the, at, this, at this stage on the HF. We said to the guy, we, we have a possible problem. We, we've developed an oil leak and we, we don't know how, how, how bad it might be. And he said, oh, well, uh, if it gets any worse, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Well, we eventually arrived at, um, at uh, where we land? We landed at a place called Hollister in California, just inland from the coast at about uh, quarter to three in the morning. And, and please us, so we didn't run out of oil. And what had happened, we discovered the following day, next morning, when we had an engineer come and help us have a look, the um, left-hand magneto had come adrift on the right engine. We're just sitting there with the bolts loose, but hadn't, hadn't fallen out <laughs> and we're still working. So uh, you, you've got to be a bit lucky sometimes, haven't you? So, uh, yeah, th those kind of ferry flights have been few and far between. M most of them don't, don't have much uh, uh, drama at all. Uh, it was, let me see, yeah, back in, uh, 1959, and I was uh, doing a aerial top dressing job on a remote property at the top of the Hunter River in New South Wales, uh, flying a Cessna 180, of course, and those at that time. And uh, the, the, you'd be impressed with this job over here. We, we were taken off at the 2,000 foot level above sea level and climbing to spread at 4,000. <laughs> application rate was half a hundred weight to the acre <laughs> using uh, sulfur fortified super so there you go uh, that that was a career not a job i can tell you it was there where i met eric andrews and bo roden and they subsequently became part of the team we uh, established at orange and uh, they headed up our transport division there uh, hauling superphosphate for us from the railheads to the airstrip. It was also there that Bo lost his life uh, driving a truck that had a mechanical failure, uh, no fault of his. And uh, that saddened everybody a great deal because he was a beaut bloke. And uh, uh, we certainly come to realize that accidents occur and uh, it's just uh, peculiar how fate affects different people. Uh, I had a horrendous truck accident myself, driving a, a truck with an aircraft loader on the back of it, and I smashed the thing to smithereens, rolled it over and over a number of times, and stepped out with three busted ribs. And I was flying again next morning, and, uh, you know, that's... That's the way it goes. Uh, I'd completely lost control of the vehicle on a steep hill and, and uh, I had no right to survive it. So, uh, anyway, uh, that, that's just what happens. Um, Ozzy James came to Australia, as you probably all know. He came to Orange and uh, Eric Andrews was eventually running the company there for Ozzy that he purchased from us and uh, and I think Ozzy still got contacts in Orange uh, so that's very good the um, uh, one of our uh, very uh, interesting trips uh, which involved our civil aviation department and me in a bit of a skirmish it <laughs> was uh, Back in about 19, oh, oh it must be early 60s, Bill Smith, uh, the brother of Tex from Queenstown. Uh, Bill uh, lived in Australia, as you probably mostly know, and uh, 
He was a designer of uh, ag aeroplanes. He built the, uh, or redesigned the Crop Master, which I was involved in. And uh, <laughs> there's plenty of people know the story about the Crop Master coming to fielding. But for those who don't, I'll tell you, it was, uh, uh, it was not funny at the time, but looking back on it now, it, it looks pretty funny. I'd uh, brought the crop master over uh, from uh, Wellington, from Rongatai, where it had been assembled. It was flown in there from Australia, and uh, I brought it up here and flew it over to Fielding, and the first guy I run into is Barry Sate. And then the docs there, I knew him well, you see. He'd, uh, he'd done some work for me in Australia. He used to come over there for his holidays. <laughs> now, that's a busman's holiday for you. <laughs> he'd come over there and fly stop dresser for two or three weeks. Anyway, Barry uh, had a brand new 185. It had just arrived from New Plymouth. I think Phil Lightman probably sent it down to him the day before. And it never had a commercial load in it. And uh, he said, gee, I'd like to give that airplane a try um, of yours against this 185. He said, let's put the same load in each of them and we'll take off side by side and see. We break as quick as we can, come back and sew. And then, you yeah, know, so we did all that. And uh, we came back across the field. I think we're pretty neck and neck. And, uh, and then we got rid of the load. And then a dogfight developed over the airfield. We had a, had a bit of a skirmish for a while, and I think he won. And, and then uh, uh, I peeled off and landed on the grass there. It was, the field looks kind of different now. It must have been shortened up a bit from what it was then. And uh, I just dropped in quietly over the fence and pulled up as quick as I could. And pretty pleased with myself, because I didn't use much of the field. Barry comes in and easily, you know, pulls up alongside and uh, he jumps out and got his engine running. He says, comes over and I was sitting in an airplane. He says, all right, get out of that thing and let me have a fly of it. <laughs> I was pleased. Yeah, I said, yeah, by all means. And I got up in the wing. He's in the pilot seat now and I'm just running him around the gadgetry in the cockpit. And next thing I hear a change in engine tone, I look around, <laughs> it's 185, it's just starting to move away. Mm, well, I, I tried very hard for him, I ran along the top of the wing and kept going, as tried, tried my best to reach it, I got to the, to the door, I even got to the step, but I could not get the door open and stay on the step at the same time, there was a problem there with, <laughs> you know what it is, the, the door's in the way. So I, I, I just couldn't do it, and finally I had to let go, got chowdered with a tailplane, and, and off she went. Well, that airplane put on the best turn that you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> it went around, it went a hundred yards or so, got up speed nicely. It, apparently they'd taken off the vernier throttle coupling and just turned it into a push-pull throttle. And that really was the basis of the problem because the spring was still there and she pulled her open. And the further she went, the more power she got. <laughs> and and uh, my God, what a, what a turnout. It ground looped, it put the leg right under the fuselage, it wing tipped down on the ground and it's like an old dog, it just got up and shook itself and away it went again. <laughs> and it did this about three times. And <laughs> I tell you what, there was a big audience of top dressing guys along and a row of aeroplanes in front of the hangars there and it was going straight at them. And you, never, you never saw people disperse so rapidly in your life. And then it ground looped and then it set off at another angle and finally it set off in, in the clear and flew. Actually it got airborne, it was quite clearly airborne for probably a hundred yards. But unfortunately, she just didn't have enough height to clear the fence. Otherwise, I'm sure the story would <laughs> would have uh, extended a, a lot further. It hit the fence and tipped it upside down. It ended up on its back on the railway line there, near Furling. And uh, my goodness, there was a freight train about 100 yards coming down. <laughs> 
Tell you what, there's steam going everywhere and he pulls up. <laughs> and, you know, it's just, just a, a remarkable event. I, I don't think anybody was amused back at New Plymouth because it would have been a, a, quite a loss at that time. But uh, it was an accident and uh, Barry didn't mean it to happen, that's for sure. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that goes on. Um, another interesting little exercise, I think I am telling Ozzy about this one earlier on because we started talking about a, a fellow we knew in Western Australia who's now uh, passed on, but uh, Billy Bolden, uh, he, he got me to fly a, a crop master from uh, Sydney to Perth. And it, it was all organised around a media thing in Perth when the aeroplane got there. The television was going to be there and, you know, it was nice publicity for Bill's new airplane. And, and uh, I uh, went out of, I uh, went to, uh, yes, Sedona. I started out from, I believe, that morning and uh, took off from Sedona in South Australia. I had very limited range in the crop master, you know, they don't, they don't go very far on tankful. But I carried some uh, cans in a hopper and, uh, the idea was that when I got up the road a bit, oh, there's plenty of places to land. You know, clay pans everywhere, so you'll be right. We'll just pop down, put fuel in, and then continue on to forest. Well, it all turned very sour because when I went down to look for clay pan, I got close to the ground. I said, God, you know, there's nothing but rocks everywhere. These little, little sharp, pointy rocks. It's what they call the gibber country over there in, in the desert. And I wasn't awake up to this, and uh, oh, that, that was a nasty situation. I think, well, gee, what do I do now? I have to make a command decision here pretty quick. <laughs> do I go back or and try and get back into good country, or will I keep keep going up to the railway line? So I elected to go to the railway line, and uh, thought, oh, I'll be bound to find a place up there to land on. And uh, sure enough, uh, I get up there, and you know it. The, the timbers <laughs> right up to the the track. There's there's no I can't find a place to land. So I keep travelling towards forest, and in the end I'm getting desperately short of fuel. Uh, I know that if, if this goes on for another five minutes, uh, then then it, the decision's going to be taken out of my hand. So I saw a little clearing at 150 yards long, and it'll it'll have to do. And there's two wheel tracks there. So I, I we bring the crop master in, and she's pretty light at this stage, <laughs> not much gas in it, and uh, proper on the road, and I'm going great. I thought I had it made, and then bang, I blow the starboard main wheel tyre, and uh, this is not a very nice situation out, out in the blooming desert there, the Nullarbor. At least I'm on the railway line, so I won't, you know, I won't perish. Um, but I'll, I'll have to, I don't know what to do. I'll, I'll start off, I'll put the fuel in anyway. <laughs> I'll be progressive in attitude about this. So I get the cans out and put the fuel in, put it back in the hopper, and I no sooner finished, I suppose within three or four minutes, and I hear a noise coming down the railway line. It's one of those little machines that the guys travel around in the gangers, you know, that fix the lines. And these two big burly fellas, get off, come over and they said, geez, mate, what are you, what are you doing here? <laughs> I said, well, so I had to tell them, you know, what happened. And, oh yeah, that was, they understood that. And uh, they said, well, what are you going to do now? I said, well, I'd like to take off if possible. He said, what, with a flat tyre? I said, yeah, well, I said, this aeroplane's got a lot of power. It was a 250 horsepower, like coming powered aeroplane. Because I think if we uh, could get it back there and into the, put the tail in the bushes with the breezes flowing, I'll take off that way and I reckon she'll make it. And uh, he said, well, maybe we could carry the wing for you for a bit to, to give you a start. I said, yeah, well, that's good. So that's what we did. And uh, we got it into position and, and I got behind the wheel again and away we went. And... Uh, I remember seeing these two rolling in the dust as we 
disperse down this track and and uh, I, I must tell you that they've taken all the rocks out for me with their crowbars and things too before we did this and uh, it was very helpful as we got off without doing any more damage but we still had a blown right hand tyre so I, I whip up to this is getting a bit long this story <laughs> I, I whip up to a forest and land there and just land outside the hangar because the big clay fan and it's all nice and clear and it was no problem to land when you could manoeuvre like that get the weight on the, on the good tyre and come to a stop get some fuel file a flight plan and I'm off and you don't want to talk to anybody really and uh, I had to land again to put fuel in at uh, oh I think it's some place uh, between there and Kalgoorlie I forget the name of it now, Rowing or something like that and uh, uh, no problem again I uh, get to Kalgoorlie now the, this is a bit more of a problem because it's a bit civilised there <laughs> we've got a civil aviation de <laughs> department and various other things so uh, the first thing I get is a message when I got there that the superintendent from Perth has advised me that uh, I should not proceed with this aeroplane unless it's fully serviceable hmm. so we, we hunted around and the only thing we could find was a tube that was about three sizes too big and no tyres available anywhere for a crop master so we put a sleeve in, patched it up as best we could stuffed the tube in, pumped her up and she stood up and looked pretty good so off I went and, and to cut a long story short I, I eventually get into Perth and I, I land there and sure enough there's these two bureaucratic looking gentlemen come straight up approach the aeroplane and you wouldn't want to believe it, you know, if you, you could park the aeroplane so that the split in the tyre was at the top, when it didn't have all that pressure bearing down on it, it would look a lot better. But mine had to be right at the bottom. <laughs> and I couldn't see it from the cockpit naturally, so I just had to take a chance on it. So when they, when they were coming towards the aeroplane, I just <coughs> shoved the aeroplane a little bit to get the, the split up, and, and when they came, they said, uh, looked around, you know, I mean, it was perfectly obvious he could see the tyre had a bad cut in it, but uh, he said, we, we were being sent to inspect this thing, and he said, it looks okay to us, it's, your tyres are still inflated. I said, yep, nothing wrong here. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that uh, got, us, got us out of a, what was a very difficult situation, and, and bit Billy... Uh, uh, Bolton got his aeroplane on schedule. Well, yes, uh, well, enough stories. Anyway, it's uh, it's been great to come and uh, and have a talk with you. I hope it hasn't bored you. But we'll uh, certainly uh, look forward to answering any questions if anybody uh, wanted to ask anything about the past uh, while we're here. Uh, maybe we can answer them. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll catch you later. Ladies and gentlemen, Jim Hazelton. What okay, we've got here uh, Russell. How are you going, Russell? Yeah, well, as well as can be expected after 50 years. That's good. And uh, when did you start flying at all? When did you start flying first time? I uh, don't uh, remember too much now. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's a long time ago, back in the Gore and Ian Ritchie days, and uh, Bill Hewitt. All right. Yeah. And what type of aircraft are you flying? I uh, started off with Tiger Moss. Tiger Moss, and uh, you progressed from there onto other aircraft. Yeah, we had a couple of years on Tigers, and then uh, graduated up to uh, Viper Cub, Fletcher 180. And uh, any uh, all straight flying? No uh, little mishaps at all anywhere on the line? Or everything all pretty safe and nice and quiet? Yeah, everything's pretty basic, except for the time the cat scared the shit out of me. The time the what? The cat? The cat, yeah. Okay, what happened there? We got an old hanger cat, I think. Most of the hangers in New Zealand have got a hanger cat. This thing used to have pups, I mean uh, kittens, three or four times a year, and... Uh, one of them must have got locked inside the locker in the back of the Tiger Moth. I was going out to a job there one day and um, 
about 3,000 feet up and just imagining how I could have shortened the Battle of Britain. Next thing I felt something on the side of my face, I put my hand up and there was blood on it. I thought, what the hell's that? And I turned around and rubbed it again, more blood. That bloody kitten walked out around the side of my shoulder just clinging on. <laughs> so, uh, the kitten's on the aircraft. Yeah, I just found that too. <laughs> now, what are you up to now, anyway? What am I, what? What are you up to now, at the moment? Still, still flying. Still flying? Who yep. for? Uh, flying for a company called Glacier Southern Lakes. Helicopters. Oh, so helicopters, okay. Yeah. So, uh, good flying down there? Yeah, good. Yeah. What sort of work do you do down there in the helicopter? Um, probably 90% tourist work now. Tourist trade? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, we're down that way, we'll pop in and uh, get a bit of a cheap flight. What do you reckon? You come down there, I'll give you a 50% cut. <laughs> uh, you're right, you're right. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed the weekend and uh, we'll catch up again. It's been a beautiful maybe weekend. Another, maybe another five years' time yeah. for the next one. All we're going to do is con bloody Mangum into doing another one. Yeah, OK, well, yeah. Sure, I'm sure we will do. Yeah. All right, thanks a lot, Russ. We'll okay. on. See ya. Nice to meet you. We've just met the first time for 42 years. First time you met for 42 years. Yeah, that's right. OK, okay starting with you, Guy, when did you start your flying career? Whereabouts? I started in the Waikato 1950. 1950, flying what sort of aircraft? Tiger Moth. Tiger Moths? Yeah. And uh, you progressed after a few years from Tiger Moths? Yes, to Fletchers. To Fletchers? Yes. That's good. Still in the same area or did you fly around the country at all? Oh, yeah, we, 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 we operated all around the Waikato and around South Auckland. And That's good. Rotary and so on. Oh, excellent, excellent. How many hours do you reckon you've already cracked up over the years? Oh, I've got about 8,000. How many? 8,000. 8,000 hours. That's not very many. Oh, that's all right. That's enjoyable hours, though, eh? Oh, well, yes. right. It's more important. We used to do up to 100 landings and takeoffs in a day. No, oh, right, OK, yeah, that, yeah, yeah. That is the difference. It's yes, not yes, the yes. number of hours. Yes. It's the number of landings and takeoffs. Yes. Take yes. And where did you start, Frank? When did you start flying? Well, I started flying in England, but then I started aerial top dressing in fielding. Right. And then I was the first to get a license for aerial spraying. I did about 4,000 hours with Tigers spraying. Right, whereabouts in the Union? Based in fielding at Tarnilly. Okay, right, yes, yes. And yes. Uh, then I went into tourist flying after that. Okay. And and I, but I did 15 years of uh, agricultural flying. Okay, and you said uh, when we got here that they just met this fellow after how many years? Well, I gave it away, um, and I, I just haven't seen a lot of, I haven't seen a lot of these guys. I can't even recognise them. <laughs> no, you know, I, I did recognise Guy, but yeah, you know. Yeah. So you two work together? Did you work no, together? we we never worked together. No. But we went, we went in opposition because right. it, it was tough and claw when you were in opposition. Yeah, wasn't oh, it? yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, sounds good. Mind you, I also ran a company called Aviation Sales and Service, and I sold Guy quite a lot of spares at various times. Yeah, yeah you did. Oh, yeah. yeah. And did you enjoy the weekend this weekend? Well, you few faces and. Uh, it doesn't happen often, and yeah. I'm particularly lucky to be here this time yeah, because yeah. the last one, the 40-year one, right. when they thought that was going to be the last, yeah. I ended up in hospital with a, yeah. a very serious operation. Oh, yeah. To be here today is a moment. That's good. Oh, thank you, uh, people, Frank and Guy, and uh, I hope you'll, uh, we'll see you in the 55th yeah, we'll anniversary. <laughs> Same place, same if, channel. If we've got this far, we're going to get the rest. That's great stuff. All right, catch you later. Thanks very much. Thank you very much. And here is another uh, life from way back to when you start flying. When? Uh, I started top dressing in 59. 59. And what sort of aircraft were you flying in then? The uh, Piper Cup. Piper Cup. Everyone, everyone started off in the old Piper Cup, didn't they? You had, to, you had to. And did you go on to any other aircraft after that? Or? Yeah, got to spray on a Tiger Moth. Tiger Moth, okay. A bit of a step up, no, isn't no, it? Yeah, yeah. No, no cabin heat. No cabin heat, okay. And uh, where, what sort of areas? Whereabouts were you flying? We well, based out of Wanganui and then I uh, was lucky enough to train on helicopters with okay, right. Mike Alexander. Yes, yes, yes. Um, okay. And uh, you'll, you fly the hillers and that sort of thing? Yep. Hillers and what else? Anything else apart from the hillers? Mainly hillers in New Zealand and okay. uh, then went on to uh, 
uh, joined the Hiller factory in the United States. Okay, yeah, yeah. And how do you like flying New Zealand? Good. Yeah, it's, uh, it's good, yeah. How many, yeah hours, a lot of fun. how many hours do you reckon would have cranked up? Oh, I don't know. Uh, about 15, 15,000 on helicopters. 15,000. It's a lot of hours, isn't it? Yeah, I know. Which, which There's a hell of a lot more around than me, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, but still, it's, it's, uh, it's all part of, the, um, part of the scene, isn't it? Okay? Oh, yeah. And, uh, all right. We enjoy the weekend so far? Yeah, we we'll do, do it all again. That's good, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, then we'll, we'll probably see you again another five Thanks. years in the 55th. Thanks, Barry. Very good. Okay, yeah, I'll catch you later. Good. See ya. Yep. Thanks a lot. I saw you here again at the uh, 50th anniversary. When did you start flying, Fred? When? Uh, 1950. 1950, and where about? Oh, that was in the Thames area. Started off as one Tiger Moth. Tiger Moth, yeah. One, one driver, one loader, and that was it. And uh, what sort of uh, stuff were you flying in those days? Oh, uh, just no, Super Plus 8 in particular. Okay. And um, any little bit of stories or anecdotes on your Tigers that you can sort of think of? No bent props at all? Oh, there's quite a lot of stories, really, but I must. Not wise to tell them to, really, I suppose. But, <laughs> and no, no it was, you know, wool prices were very good in those days. And the business right. grew like topsy. And, yeah, yeah. And then in 1972, we amalgamated with Field Air. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Um, I was there for 10 years as their managing director until I retired. Oh, that's excellent. Okay. I've okay. been that way for the last 15 years, and happy is <laughs> one thing. Okay, oh, well, it's very good. I hope you enjoy the weekend so far, and um, yeah, I might see you here another five years at the 55th yep. anniversary. I'll be here. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah. Great, great function. Great <laughs> All function. Right, Thanks a lot. Catch Thank you later. You. Okay. Yeah. Uh, John McDonald here, and uh, when did you start flying uh, in your career, John? 49. 49. Okay, and what sort of aircraft? Tiger Moths. Tiger Moths, okay. And sort of uh, what sort of areas? Around fielding here or were you all over the country? No, no, Auckland. All over? In the Wairapa. Or in the Wairapa as well? Okay, didn't do any um, stuff in the Tarus at all? Oh, yeah, down there. But, okay, right. System of the 80s. Okay, right, here yeah, doing some drops for the forestry or any of that at all in the Tarus? Uh, not right. really. Just, just straight super. Just looked after a prison. <laughs> oh, it's good stuff. And uh, what are you doing now yourself? Still connected with aviation anyway? Or? Yes, but I'm in Australia. Okay, right. Yeah. We yeah. have the franchise for Air Tractor. Okay, right. And we've sold presently about 145. Okay, yeah. So you can sit back and relax a little bit now, I suppose, can you? More or less, yes. <laughs> it's about bye bye time. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed the weekend and uh, see a few comrades and that it's and uh, tell a few thing. lies and it's been a bit more super. <laughs> okay, John, thanks a lot. We'll see you later. It works with you. Uh, John, John, isn't it? Hey, John. Yes, John, okay. All right. Yes. Okay. okay. Well, what we got, do you want to know? we got uh, John and Alec here, the two, um, yeah, John Wellington and uh, Alec Foster. Okay, uh, so you, John, first. Where, whereabouts did you start flying? I started flying in Tickawiddy. Well, that's where my aerial top dressing started. Right. But a uh, couple of years before that, I started with Aussie James in September 1950. 1950? 1950. I worked for Oz for three months. I didn't like the airstrips that he made. The particular person made them. He was a wing commander <laughs> and a hell of a good pilot. And he just told me in no uncertain terms, I can fly those airstrips, and if you can't, bad luck. Now, there's a sequel to this, because I went to Tickawiddy with a Tiger Moth and an old Chef truck and a 44-gallon drum with a butterfly in the bottom and a sugar bag. And that's how we started aerial top racing out of Tickawiddy. 1952. What sort of aircraft were you flying out of then? What sort of aircraft? What did we watch? What sort of aircraft were you flying? Well, we were flying Tiger Moths at the start. We had, we worked up to three. Then we bought Cessna aircraft. Uh, but we wanted something bigger. So we started to build an air truck. Okay, right. Now that was a big thing. I bought 89 Harvards. And we took every bit out of the Harvard that we could, and we built this air truck. 48-foot wingspan, 600 horses, carried a ton and a half. 
But in the meantime, we had three or four Cessnas. Alec came and joined us, and he flew with us, and this guy did a... Um, how will I put it? <laughs> you remember that landing? I remember very well. <laughs> Alex, where did you start flying? When? When did you start flying? Well, uh, initially, the, the first flying training was okay. with, with Wellington Aero Club in 1946. Oh, right, okay, mm. yeah. Mm. So you had a bit of a history in the background well, now. Go, flying, go back to there, yeah. yeah, yeah. When did you actually start to uh, talk passing in? The 31st of December, 1950. You've got that date pretty well set up yep. in your mind, haven't you? Yep. <laughs> I actually started working on it on the 31st. Okay, and the same thing again, I'll take them off. Uh, I did about five years on them. Five years, right? About two and a half thousand hours, believe it or not. Okay. And did you partner up with this young fella here, did you? No, he advertised for a pilot for a flight for it. Right. Slow me down, I got the job. Okay, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And what sort of, what country, is the, what part of the country did you fly in? In New Zealand, all over or just? Oh, hell. Um, I'll be down in Wairarapa. Wairarapa, yeah. East Coast, just from East Coast. Okay. Um, Wanganui, Ten Country, North Auckland. Excellent. So, you know, I'm yeah. South Island. Okay, it's good for you to... Know, I, don't, I, don't, I don't like flying over the waters. I don't go south. No, you haven't done that yet. No, you not Okay, next guy. You're welcome. Okay. Anybody been in the industry since 1949? Ozzy James is one. Come forward, guys. Anyone who's been here since in, in the industry in 1949? Okay. Who's next, Noel? Just come and stand up the front here. Michael Brazier. Son of the man who started all of this, I understand. Michael, where are you? Give us a wave. Here he is. He's coming forward. Who's next here? No? The oldest pilot here, I think it's George Hitterhill. Alan Geddes from Canada. Where are you guys? Come forward, please. Len Bryant, Alan Geddes from Canada. Come a long, long way to be a part of this. Right, Phil and Noel Kinvik from Hungary. Come forward, please. And with some apologies, we'll have to invite an Australian up here as well, I feel. <laughs> Where is he? Jim. Give him the ninth. No? This is our crowd, ladies and gentlemen. They represent those who have come the furthest. They represent those who have been here the longest. We'll ask them to come forward and collectively take that knife and put a lovely great big cut in the 50th birthday cake. Guys, if you'd like to gather around the cake, put your hand on the knife and make the first cut. On behalf of everybody here, your golden anniversary, 50 years in the business. Thank you very much for doing that. And happy birthday, y'all. And we'll be circulating that cake a little bit later on, obviously. We'll get the staff to do a little more cutting on it, and then we'll make sure you get a slice. Now, Noel, next up. It's been a great pleasure to do this, and an honour to do this tonight. But I got a little bit of, bit of, bit of quiet, because it's actually a special thing. But before we start, I think actually it was just something that Jim was talking about, about this brawl in a pub. And brought to, brought to mind a, uh, an episode that I heard about years ago. Now there is one person here that will probably uh, tell me whether it's true or not, and that's actually John McDowell. Where is he? Anyway, it reminds me of a pilot that I used to work with. A chap by the name of Bill Peterson. Now Bill Peterson and, and Chas Chambers were working at Tiger Moss at a place uh, called Only Faro, just across the river from Turkau, across the Waikato River. They finished a the job on a Saturday afternoon, and in those days, of course, the pubs closed at 6 o'clock. 
So what did Bill and uh, Chash do? They went in and dropped the tiger moths into the paddock behind the two of cow pups. The loader driver came in with the loader. Six o'clock, they were told to go, you know, close the pub. Chash came out and he looked at the driver and he says, you're too pissed to drive. He said, you take the tiger. <laughs> So Bill and, the, Bill and the driver took the Tigers back to Mangary, no problem at all. Tash went to the loader, got down the road and got a ticket for being drunk and charged. <laughs> but anyway, to get on with the business in hand, OK, tonight is our, is our 50th uh, anniversary of, of the industry. There are quite a few people here that have probably been in, the, in that, sort of close to that. I haven't quite made that yet, I've only been 39 years. But the New Zealand Agricultural Aviation Association, or the NZAAA as we're uh, normally known, thought it was, about, it was a good opportunity to uh, sort of honour somebody who's actually spent a long time in the industry. Now this was open, as, as I think it had on the thing there, uh, pilots, drivers, office staff, uh, ops managers, wives, playmates, or whatever you, so we left the wives and Sorry about the wives, I mean, we did a lot, forgot about that. And the playmates. But quite often, it's either pilots that are normally honoured on, on certain things. But we decided that it's about time we looked at somebody else. Now, without, without, a, without a loader driver, what do we do? Absolutely nothing. So we looked, at, we looked around the industry and we came up with one person. Now, this person... No, actually, I've known him personally since 1962. He's a great chap. Very dedicated to his job. He's actually worked for four companies in his whole uh, period of time. And that wasn't by choice. That was because either the company was bought out or uh, changes, you know, been the thing. Pro probably... Uh, well, I've actually, I don't know how I'm going to get away with this, but I'll, I'll just have to keep on going. The avenue he started in Danny Burke for air spread on the 9th of January, 1952. He then moved, I think, after a couple of years. So actually, this is a thing I only found out last night. He went to Mount Maunganui and he worked for, for still worked for air spread until 1962. Air spread was taken over by James Aviation. So he carried on with James Aviation until uh, June 1984. At that time, of course, James had changed things and uh, sold the uh, units to the pilots. So then he worked for Williams Aerial Work until August 1988. From then on, of course, as quite a few of you are aware, Super Air was formed. And that person was still working, even though, be it at this time, perhaps part-time, for Super Air. In those 47 years, actually, I don't know why he didn't start in 49, that would have made it to 50, wouldn't it? In those 47 years, he was actually probably loaded for several pilots. Basically, and I'm not just too sure quite on the years, but you'd probably say 29 for one and 15 for the other. He's actually only related for two, two pilots, really. One was Dave Kohu, the other was Derek Williams. And Derek is uh, here tonight. You probably, most of you now know who it is. Yeah. And the person concerned will know who it is. And I would like to call now on Alan Rose and his wife, who here, to come forward. Yeah. Probably say, 
Actually, uh, there's probably quite a few things I could actually say about Alan, but I'm not too sure whether I should be. <laughs> there is one thing about it, he actually does play a mean game of golf, I know that. And if, probably if it wasn't for Alan, I probably wouldn't be playing golf myself, but he was the one that, back in, uh, in the early 60s with, with um, Alan and Dave Cohu and Rod and Cliff, what have you, he actually got me into the game. But in those 47 years, I think Alan, he probably only had one little bit of a period off. Now, I don't know whether I should actually say, but have I got your blessing? Yes. Alan had a little bit of a health problem. At one stage, uh, we won't say quite when it was. Which actually, unfortunately, did affect his speech. He was so very good when he came back to work that because of his, the, the uh, person in the office, I know it's now, I'm going to eat Percy Brake and, and everybody else involved, that anything that went over the RT had to actually be done with a yes or no answer. There were so many clicks for yes, so many close clicks for no. But actually, Alan was quite good. He actually could say one word. It actually was a four-letter word that actually started with F. <laughs> <laughs> but over the years, you know, things have improved. His speech has improved, and actually, Alan has just carried on. Alan, on behalf of the NZAAA, I would like to present to you this plaque and I'll actually read what it's, what's on it for everybody concerned. It says the NZAAA, New Zealand Agricultural Aviation Association, award to Alan Rose an appreciation of 47 continuous year service to agricultural aviation in the Bay of Plenty area. Presented at the Ag Aviation Golden Anniversary Palmerston North, May 1999. It's actually been signed by two people. It's been signed by John Sinclair, the president of the NZAAA, and by myself as chairman of the Northern Branch. Alan, it gives me great pleasure to present to you this plaque. And for her here, I think actually for putting up with him for all those years. <laughs> well done, and to both of you, our congratulations. Can you hear me? Yeah. I'll make it short. Just like to thank you, David, very, very much for this occasion. It's been absolutely marvellous. We've had a wonderful time. And, um, I'm very pleased for Alan, all the years he's worked. Thank you all very much. It's been lovely. Now, now just, there is another thing, actually, but I've actually asked the them both to stay here because there is something else that I do have out and all. If you could just bear with us a little while, Alan, you worked with two guys here, didn't you? Uh, I think the band leader, Ray Ball, yeah. Yeah. and you know a reprobate called Dick Jones, who is one of the organising committee here. Could those two guys come forward, please? <laughs> we finally got Jack chained to a chair. <laughs> <laughs> now, on behalf of the uh, organising committee of uh, of the Golden Age anniversary, I'll give this to Dick. We'd like to uh, steal a bit of thunder and give you one too. Hello, what job? Well done. <laughs> and uh, who are you? You're the uh, pittance of what they tell us. Behind every good man, there's a woman. Now they never tell you what the hell she's doing back there, <laughs> but in, but in this case we know. And I think my wife Val would like to just bring forward and recognise what you've done for, the, for Alan in the past years. Congratulations, Alan. You're quite happy? It's a pity you paid to come, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, 
I, ladies and gentlemen, thanks very much, but I must say, all of us wouldn't be here tonight if it hadn't been for our chairman, I'll, I'll give him a build-up of directors, Noel Mangan and his wife, Val. I think Noel has travelled north, right up to the North Island, right to the south. And I think the last time we finished the first the last uh, anniversary started the second day. And he's done that so well and got sponsors. None of us would have been here tonight if it hadn't been for Noel Mangan and his wife, Val. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> That's the last time you ever get a microphone. <laughs> I'd like to thank the sponsors, mainly uh, first. We've had a terrific amount of response from the sponsors. I hope they feel that they've uh, got value for their money. It's uh, an expensive outfit to run this. I'm hoping that you can top the uh, bill that you did last year and with uh, last year, I said last five years. You hit 23,000 in booze on that night. <laughs> You were drinking it at $4,200 an hour for your hourly guys. <laughs> but thank you for coming. And above all, thank you for opening your checkbooks. And thank you very much. Now, Dick did mention, there's Barry Cook over there. He's sitting over there in the corner. Or has he just gone out? Anyway, there's Lil, there's Pat and uh, Dick, and especially my wife. Uh, without this, you give me the other age, but it's, uh, it's, it's shared. It is really shared between the lot. And uh, I appreciate that you've come. Uh, that's about all I can say. I think that's enough bullshit for one night. <laughs> Thank you very much, Noel. Congratulations. Hi, here, here we got, uh, we got George this time. George at the, here at the 50th uh, anniversary of Egg Pilots. Uh, when did you start flying your career? Uh, about 1953 I started flying and I started professionally in 1957. 1957 and uh, when 1953 what sort of aircraft did you start flying in? Tiger Moth. Tiger Moth. Tiger Moth. And, and where, whereabouts? Uh, when I started top dressing in 57 we flew Tiger Moth in uh, Mossburn for Moss Hewitt Aviation. Okay, alright. And you moved up to other aircraft? Yes, yes. We went into uh, Ossus. Osters, yep. And um, from there into, uh, well, PA-18As, right. Pawnees, and then up the line until we got to the big machinery, like series. Okay, right, yeah, yeah. yeah. And you're still in the aviation now? Yes, still flying still today, flying. yes. Still flying. What aircraft are you flying at the moment? A, a Fletcher. Fletcher's, okay. Yeah. And who for? The Royal Air Services. Royal Air Services, yeah, okay. In and building. Based in Fielding. Fielding, yeah. And what parts of the country have you flown in? All over? Well, I, I started in, in uh, Southland, then went to Timaru. Right. From Timaru to Amberley. Amberley to. did a time in Nelson. From right. Nelson to Martinborough. Right, okay. And uh, in the Wairapa. Right. And from the Wairapa to Thai Happy. Right. And from Thai Happy to Palmerston, uh, you know, base here right. with yep. aerial farming, yep. New Zealand yep. Limited. And that was in 1960. So it was all done in a very okay. short period yeah. of time, yeah. and uh, from then on I stayed here. I've been here okay. ever since. Oh, it's good, yeah. So you sort of worked your way up to the South Island, yeah. bottom end almost, and right through. Right Flying right. all sorts of terrain and different yes. sort of countries, yes, and that's that's right. mountains and it's valleys and flats and mm. plains and all sorts of stuff. Well, down south it is very rough terrain. Right. Uh, you know, uh, very mountainous, right, yep, difficult yep. terrain, okay. but uh, here it is quite easy. And you have a good career, good straight flying career, no bent tops or...? Well, we, we had our little uh, mishaps little and mishaps. Uh, whoopsies. Any whoopsies? Any, any, good, any good ones you can sort of uh, think no, of? No, not, not really. Uh, uh, most of them were due to engine failures. Right, right. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And... Um, the rest of them, one one I did was a, a slight mistake. Uh, I came, I, I was flying a series, which is right. a big aircraft, yeah. and then I, the, the thing had to go in for maintenance, and I, I took a Pawnee, which right. is the smallest machine. The driver sits behind the engine in a little cubicle part there, and we flew to the airstrip, and unfortunately I encountered the sink, and I had carburetor heat on because it was a very frosty morning. Right. 
and the engine wouldn't respond when I opened it up. And she hit the end of the airstrip, <laughs> took the undercard off, and we slid up and did a magnificent belly landing. Oh, very nice. And I was sitting there, switching everything off in a hurry, and the, uh, the, I, said, I was yelling out to the driver, get up. You know, get, yeah. and he was he was standing outside yelling at me. To get out. What, what about you? He said, I've uh, I've ex <laughs> I've got out long ago. Yeah. I said, what was the hurry? He said, there was a bit of smoke coming out the front. <laughs> oh well, at least so, you survived the last sort of thing. Yes, anyway. yes. Thing and, and it was and that driver, him and I worked together for 27 years. 27 years. 27 years. Amazing stuff, eh? Right? That okay. was. It was. How many hours do you reckon you would have, you would have clocked up? Uh, about 20,000. 20,000 hours. 20, yeah. Guys, have a look around at the hall tonight. I reckon there'll be close to half a million hours flying before you uh, there. Be, there'll be some blokes there with a lot more hours than me. Amazing stuff, It right? depends, depends what type of work and what type of aeroplanes yeah, they yeah, fly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in the matter of two here, you cannot do that many hours. Right, okay, yeah. You know, uh, and some of these fellas in the Waikato and things, they right. do 1,200 hours a year, no trouble at so, all. So why is that? Is it because different well, farming structure? Different, different area. Different area, You know, right. more, more fertilizer goes okay, on. Yeah, in yeah, the Waikato, yeah. for instance, it goes on twice a year. Right, okay. On the dairy farms. Yes, yes, yes. So yes. they do a lot more work. Right, and a bit more money too is up there, I suppose, yeah. perhaps. And, and, then, uh, and then I was, I was flying a, a large aircraft like a series which carried a right. ton in the days when almost all aircraft couldn't carry much more than half a ton. Right, okay, yeah. Initially. Right. Yeah, so yeah. I was doing far less hours right. than uh, yes. people yeah, that flew yeah. the smaller right. machines. Okay. Still getting the same number of tonnage on Yeah, the that's right. Yeah. More, usually. Yeah. More. more, yeah. All right, George, I well, hope you've enjoyed the weekend and yes. uh, and I'll uh, see you probably again at the, uh, the five next years' month. time. Five years' time. Well, <laughs> let's <laughs> hope so. Let's hope so. Okay, George, thank you. Thank you very much for having us. Very good. Okay. Obviously, we're going. Well, no, uh, how's it been this weekend? Well, you'd have to say fabulous, wouldn't you? Yeah, okay, and um, the organising go okay? Yeah. Uh, what I say it was a success with the word go because uh, you walked through the door, it was it was happy. Right, right, right. And uh, no, no hiccups or any problems? No problems. Everybody seemed to enjoy themselves tonight? Well, they, they tell me they have. <laughs> And uh, where did you start your flying career? Oh, now let's not go into that. <laughs> not tonight. <laughs> about what, uh, late uh, 40s, oh, early 50s? I used to fly about 1951. What's the aircraft? Tiger Moth. Tiger Moth. There was this Tiger Moth, eh? Yeah, yeah Tiger Moth. And uh, you still flew from Tiger Moth, not the aircraft? Uh, from Tigers uh, right through Osters and Rockers. Just about every light aircraft there was. That sounds good. And uh, what your lovely wife here, Val? Let's see what sort of input she's got. And how have you, have you enjoyed the weekend so far? Very much. Have you been a backbone uh, behind the man here? Very much so. Uh, and uh, all going well? Yes. That's good. Oh, well, I hope you enjoy the rest of the night and uh, we'll catch up to you guys in the five years' time at the... Uh, the hundred. Oh, you're going to do the hundred. Okay. Oh, we'll see you at the hundred. No promise to come. No promise to come. Okay. Oh, well, I'll bring my stick as well. <laughs> okay, guys, I'll catch you later on. See you, Thank you. Well, Dick, uh, here we go then. This is the, um, the last night of the uh, 50th uh, reunion. How do you think of it so far? What do you think of it? Well, first I can say it's really marvellous. Uh, there's only about four of us trying to organise it for the last five years. Right. The, the biggest uh, trouble we had was, well not trouble, but they trying to get sponsors because we thought we'd all have to pay out money out of our own pockets being on the committee, but now, a fortnight ago, we found that we were $2 in the black, which was marvellous. Oh, it's good. And, um, and, and uh, when did you start your flying career? Do you have any flying career? When did you start flying? No, I didn't start flying. I was a bonehead. <laughs> and about, I, I thought it was about 1949, uh, uh, but I found out I was with Alan Rose and uh, uh, and my other mate was about 50. Right. And Danavik was his friend. Okay, right, yes, yes, yes. But I found out later on and I got me. I went flying with Ken Farris. Uh, those days you had a, a student license, but after you got your student license, you had to get a medical. I went up to the optician and found out that I only had tight one eye. 
Uh, doing my overseas uh, exploits, I peeked my finger through my fingers to get overseas, which is quite hilarious. Every time I went to get my medical, the doctor said, Ed, you get overseas. I said, I peeked through my fingers. Ah, <laughs> good stuff. Oh, you're a good liar, Dick, anyway. <laughs> it goes down uh, well. Yeah, and what, right. sorry, what about you, Pat? Uh, Have you enjoyed it? Pat. Yeah. Been with me for 50 years. We had our winning anniversary. Right. Last month, we only get 20 years for murder. <laughs> <laughs> what, do you think of that? what do you think of that sort of line there, Pat? I, 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 I'm used to it. I've heard it all before. Yeah, yeah I bet you've heard probably worse too, I suppose. And uh, I'd like to say that in the early days of top dressing, I used to sew the wind socks. Oh, good stuff, yeah. We had to have the wind socks. Out of what, what colour? Unbleached calico. Unbleached calico. Calico. Oh, OK. And how long does it take you to do a wind sock? Oh, I suppose a couple of hours. I uh, kept the, keep the uh, ladies at home sort of happy and... Uh... Kitchen. Mm. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's good to have a back with a backbone in the, in the industry anyway. There's always something, eh? And uh, we'll see you another five years' time at the 55th. Affirmative. Affirmative. Hi, right, guys. Good one. Catch you yeah. later. OK, uh, we've got uh, John and Tony here, both from Australia. Is that correct? No, I'm from Rotorua, New Zealand. Oh, OK. We'll go and come back to you later on. We'll have a talk of... Uh, Tony here, we'll get back to you from Australia, aren't you, Tony? I am now. I used to be here. Okay, when did you start your flying career? About 1961, I guess. Okay, whereabouts? In Palms North. Palms North, okay. So a fixed wing flying or something? Oh, that? yes. Okay, what sort of aircraft did you start flying in? Champion. In the which? Champion. Champion? Mm. Oh, okay, and uh, always in the, in the manner or two here? Oh, no, I came here to get my licenses and went flying somewhere else, you know. Oh, okay, that's a good thing, isn't it? Okay, so you're flying now in Australia? Yes. And we're about to Australia, you're flying? Kingaroy, Queensland. Okay, you're doing banana spraying and stuff like that over there? Peanuts, man. Peanuts? Peanuts, peanuts and beans. Maybe peanuts, peanuts and beans, spray. Yeah, yeah, okay. we spray all your baked beans. Okay, for what is stuff, yeah. Yeah. Whoever, yeah, okay, yeah. Not exactly for what is. They rang me up one day, the bean growers, and said, do you know Jim Waddy? He put an order in for some baked beans, and I said, well, no, I don't know him personally, but yeah, I think his check will be okay. Oh, okay. And what's the aircraft you fly in Australia? The Cessnas. Cessnas. Oh, okay. No problem with the Cessnas? No. Oh, go all right. Go all right, yeah. Enjoy the weekend so far? The year show? Oh, it's been magnificent, hasn't it? Yeah, yeah it's right. a credit to the organisers. Yeah, it's been And it's a bit of a credit to the industry that so many yeah. people want to come back and right, yeah. meet old friends, you know? Yeah. Oh, you said you started in Rotorua. When, when did you start no, I, I actually didn't start in Rotorua. I, um, I started at Wellington Aero Club. Okay, yeah. Well, I think we both started at Wellington Aero Club about the same, the yeah. same time. Yeah, well, yeah. Right. I think that must have been about 1962 or... 1962. Yeah. Yeah. So you yeah. got your flight license in Wellington? Yes. And then you moved into the aviation side of it? Yes, I, I went to Rotorua and, and did my commercial pilot's license there with Ian Palmer, the late Ian Palmer. Right. And um, then I went back down to the South Island. Sorry? He was a professional beer drinker for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I went, I went back down to the South Island and, and uh, worked for Snow Gate House down there. Okay. That was about 1965. And he came down and he was my loader driver. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 Talking to, uh, what's his name, from uh, Mwilamba. He did the same thing after us. Oh, yeah. Uh, Graydon Camp. Graydon Cap. He came along after we were there, but Fissenden and Bishop and all those guys are still there. So apparently Jerry Fissenden lives at Harvey Bay just down the road from us. Yeah, so I'm going to find him when I get back. No, I uh, retired about three months ago. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Do you sit back and uh, relax and take these? No, I'm washing dishes. You're washing dishes? Natural skills for an act. Oh, no, I, I own the um, airport cafe at Rotorua. Oh, good stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, what's still in aviation, though, are you? Yeah, still, uh, still fairly close. Still, still out, out of all the years, I've still managed to hog on to one aeroplane. Oh, so we use that as a family hack now. Yeah. Alright, Carol, I hope you enjoy your weekend and we'll see you in another five years' time. Yeah, well, let's hope so, Mario. Okay, Stories about this young fella here. What sort of stories can you tell about him? Very good. Very good to show us the civil aviation. Right. Civil aviation? Some of my friends. Some of my friends. They looked after us, Mario, yeah. Civil aviation a little yeah. bit out there, have they? Yeah, they always told us, look after these young pilots on Marston because, you know, 
you're going to be a, a role model to them. <laughs> and of course, uh, it didn't work out that way. No, no, right, no. Okay, yeah. We're a bit of Arabs ourselves. So you're a bit of embarrassment to civil aviation yeah, yeah. at times, were you? That's right. <laughs> no, anyway. good. Yeah. Enjoy the weekend so far? Lovely, lovely, Mario. Yeah, we'll yeah. see you here again in another five years at the Pacific no, nice. Day. Yeah, we'll be here. You'll be here. Yeah, Alec will be we here. We might bring our sticks with us next yeah, time. That's right. <laughs> Beautiful music here tonight, beautiful show, meeting yeah. a lot of old friends. It's a great night. Great night, All right, we'll Alex. carry on and we'll see hey, you later on then. Haven't okay, seen, have seen, seen old Alex for 40 years. 40 years. 40 years. Yeah. How the hell is old Juicy to say, hey, you look so old, I'm looking so young. <laughs> <laughs> no, Alex, great, uh, man. Good. Thanks, good. Mario. All right, we'll catch that on then. And finally, to close the weekend off, of the 50th or golden anniversary of uh, ag aviation in New Zealand, uh, more stories, more reminiscing and dancing to the music of the big jazz band.
we've got uh, Noel Kimbeck here, and uh, when did you start flying, Noel? Well, I learned in Masterton in 1956. 1956? Yep. And uh, what's the aircraft that you learned to fly in? Tiger Moth. Tiger Moth. So yes. you learned to spray in Tiger Moth? No, no. I uh, learned to fly in the uh, Tiger Moth. Right. Um, the first guy that was game enough to employ me was Bill Cookson in uh, Wairau. Right. And I went on to Piper Super Cubs. Piper Super Cubs, okay. Yep. That's in the oil and Gisman area. And how long were we up there for? Uh, I was there until about 1963. Right. And then I went to Masterton and flew for Colin Thorne, uh, okay. air contracts. Air contracts, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then uh, I was headhunted by... Uh, uh, field Air, field Air yep. flew with Field Air until 1966. In Marston again? Or? Marston and Gisborne, right, uh, right. more or less over the whole of East okay. Coast. And I understand you're overseas now? Yeah, in 1966 uh, I left, uh, May 1966 I left for England. Okay, right. Uh, 1967 I came back for another three months. Right. Back over to Europe yep. and joined the Swiss company and okay. uh, been with them ever since. A Swiss company? Yes. Okay, what's the aircraft you're flying over there then? Uh, Pilatus Porter okay, uh, right, turbine, yeah. yes. Yep. Spraying, still spraying? Or? No, I quit spraying in, um, in 19... 1991, I quit Spain. Right. I landed in a cemetery. Okay. And, uh, accidentally, I take it. Yes, accidentally. Yes. Broke a few bones and okay. said they kicked me out and yeah, said, right. uh, I said, well, that's that's enough of egg flying. Right. Okay. So what sort of flying you now then? I joined the um, relief operations. Right. Okay. Yes. So some uh, rescue type stuff. Uh, no, I was in the. Um, uh, actually, was uh, flying for ICRC, that's oh, the International yes. Red Cross, yes, yes. United Nations. Right, okay. Um, I did the border patrol between Iraq and Iran uh, uh, after the, no, sorry, Iraq. Kuwait, after Kuwait. the Kuwaiti war. After the war, yeah. yeah. After, after the yep. storm. Yep. Okay. Right. Yep. 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 And then uh, I've been in various operations. East Pakistan, floods, uh, Ethiopia, started the Ethiopian Red Cross off. Okay, right. Okay. Uh, That's funny. That's a bit of a colourful sort of career and sort of sort um, of countries and that. Yes. And, still uh, enjoying it? Oh sure, I'm on the uh, oil oil patch at the moment. Oil patch, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Still yeah. flying the Pilatus or um... still flying the Pilatus. Okay, yeah. yeah. Good, yeah. good aircraft, though. Not too bad. <laughs> Not too bad. And have you yeah. enjoyed, enjoyed the weekend so far? Fantastic. I would come twice around the world for it. Yeah, it's good. I've one. come halfway around the world. Halfway around the world, yeah. Okay, you might see you here another five years for well, the 55th one. I hope so. I hope so. Well, I'm living in Budapest and... Uh, Budapest? Yes. Okay, and, uh, you're working there as well? No, I live there and uh, work abroad. I, I okay, work, right. yeah. Five well, on, five off. Okay, so why, why Budapest of all places? My wife is Hungarian. Oh, that... Would you like to meet her sometime? <laughs> that, that's answered the question, right. Yeah, yeah she's here. Okay, <laughs> good, yeah. All right, excellent. So you brought her over with you as well? To yes. See all the, oh, yes. Uh, all the boys? From yeah, to meet, meet all these Kiwis. Oh, good yeah. stuff, yeah. Yeah, yeah. All right, and uh, well, we might see you again in another five years' time, and well, enjoy yourself and safe flying. Thank you very much, sir. Good luck. Thank okay. you. Bye-bye. Okay.